Let me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now. It's that time again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride. No surprise. It's life with Lou. People have different priorities. Ask anyone my age, and they can tell you exactly where they were when man first landed on the moon. Ooh, isn't this exciting? Ah, you got that right. I love this moonwalking stuff. Not me. Where was I when the Beatles played Ed Sullivan? Cool haircuts. Mm, no idea. But ask me where I was when Cedar Knoll Cinema opened during the summer of my eighth year. <laughs> that one I know. I was one first thing. in line. Thank you. That was the summer I discovered the movies. I watched them all. War movies, musicals, comedies, musical comedies, musical war movies, action adventures, even the foreign film. Uh -huh. Oh, man, you better watch it. <clears throat> Bonjour, mes amis. And when they ended, I watched them over again. Eh, quit worrying. The boy's fine. Oh, how do you know? We've barely seen him all summer. Hey, I haven't seen the Dalai Lama all summer either. But I know there's nothing wrong with him. The point is... We see enough of our kids. They're all over the place. I can't believe you're not even a little bit worried about Louie. Louie? Who's Louie? Andy. I'm going to the movies. Be back tonight. You know, we can... There, your son. Oh, yeah, him. He's one of ours. I thought we just rented him. You're coming back to Tombstone with me, Doc. I'm not going back. Well, in that case, I'll be taking you back. You call it, Doc. Addicted to movies, huh? huh? Well, we'll just need to win him back, that's all. You know, movies, they're evil. We need to lure him away from the dark side. The dark side? Yeah, well, that's what they call it in Curse of the Mummy. You ever see that one, honey? Brilliant cinematic masterpiece. Honey, you're babbling. How do we get Louie back? If only there was something we could interest Louie in. Something that's related to movies, but would get him out of the theater. Andy. I'm stumped. <laughs> Any ideas? Well, I think I do. Hmm. Seen it. Seen it. Seen it twice. Seen it three times. Hey, what's the big idea? It's for you, Louie. Go on, open it. It's not my birthday. It's too warm to be Christmas. I didn't just get engaged, and... And we don't celebrate Simchas Torah. So what's going on? It's a gift, that's all. Just for being you. Well, usually I get sent to my room for being me. And that's exactly where you're going unless you open that right now. Whoa, thanks. A movie camera. It's a camera for making movies. Get it? You don't say. Thanks, Mom, Dad. Happy Sim Cost Tour to you, too. Louie, where are you going? Where else? The movies. It's a double feature. Later. Come on, move it. I'll miss the movie. What's this thing for? Whoa. I don't believe it. It's like one big movie. 50 cents. Huh? It's 50 cents. Make up your mind. Are you coming in or what? <laughs> well, at least we had eight good years with him. That's right. We'll just have to concentrate on the other ten kids. Ah, space aliens from Mars. Get my radar gun. Louie, I thought you were at the movies. All right, Dad, work with me now. Move to Mom like you're gonna smooch her. What? Mom, you play hard to get now. Ow, stop. Hey, that's my trigger arm. 
Mom, you go smooch Dad. Come here, Andy. Hey. <laughs> Doing. No smooching in front of the kids. You know what that can lead to? But look, it's Louie. He's back. Oh, yeah, so he is. Tired of the movies, huh, son? That Hollywood tribe can't compete with the old American family. I can't believe I wasted my whole summer at the theater. How about we all have lunch together? Sorry, no time for lunch. I got work to do. What? You're only eight years old. What are you working on? My movie! I secluded myself in my room and wrote the script. Turns out, it wasn't so hard. What everyone says is true. These things practically write themselves. Mm. My movie was going to be an epic about a plucky, mm. yet tragic hero, Dewey Landerson. A stranger who arrives in a small town just in time to save the town folks from the evil land barons. Bring rain for the crops and win the heart of the most beautiful girl in town, the preacher's daughter. All right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So? I liked it, but... But? Well, the beginning's a little slow. The secondary characters need work, and the third act is kind of weak. Everyone's a critic. Interesting piece of work, Louis. However, I think it needs more conflict. Have you seen my book? How to write a script in three easy steps. The Halloran method. Hey, Louie, I read your script. I got a couple notes for you if you're interested. I'm not. How about a wedgie, then? I'll take the notes. All right, let's start at the beginning. What you got is okay, but wouldn't it be funny if the main character was a dog? I quickly learned that the trick to writing the perfect script is finding the perfect reader. I think it's wonderful, Louie. The best script ever. You're not just saying that, are you? I wouldn't change a letter. With the script finished, it was time to begin casting. Sorry, Dad. You're just not right for the part. But I know this part. I am this guy. Dewey Landerson's father needs to be a tough, crusty old guy with a heart of gold. I can do crusty. I am crusty. Sorry, Dad. We're going in a different direction. Next. I think we got a little problem here, Louie. What kind of problem? Ah, now will you reconsider? Sorry, Pop. It's just not gonna work out. Uh, cast aside by my own son. Like most major productions, we hit a couple of snags during casting. Until my caterer came up with the perfect solution. There, that ought to do it. Oh, my. I am your father, Dewey. Your father. What kind of world did I bring you into? Very nice, Mr. Jensen. You'll hear from us. Next. Jensen? Jensen's playing the father? I don't believe this. No decisions have been made. What about a moi? That's the part I was born to play. Sorry, Dad. I told you. Our research came back, and, well, people just don't buy you as a father. I could be third man on the street, Larry. Don't make me call security, Dad. Next. By the end of the day, I had my cast. Grunewald would play the plucky hero, Dewey Landerson. Jeannie would play Janie, the preacher's daughter, and... <laughs> Give me a part if you know what's good for you. And I was lucky enough to get veteran character actor, Glenn Glenn, to play the villain. The first day of principal photography. It was time to establish the critical bond of trust between actor and director. All right. Dewey's been sent to his room by his uncaring parents, so he consoles himself with a donut. You with me? Sure, Louie. Whatever. Okay. I want you to play the pain of the moment. Ready? Action. Cut! Stop! No, that's all wrong. Dewey wouldn't eat a donut like that. You hold it in front. Not on the side. Sorry, Louie. Donut! There you go. All right, now. And action! Real depressed now. Lift the donut and cut! 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 What now? Dewey Landerson is a kind of guy who'd take a much bigger bite! One more time now. Tommy, donut! 
Cut. What now? Was the bite too big? Too small? I didn't chew it right? Dewey Landerson doesn't breathe like that when he eats? What is it? Ran out of film. That's it. I quit. But you can't. Watch me. I'm out of here. Uh, after one quick stop in the restroom. Fine. You were cut out of the part anyway. So I heard there were some uh, creative differences at the star. Just so you know, I'm available. Forget it, Dad. I'm playing the part myself. Here you go, Tommy. Just aim it at me and turn it on when I say. Man, you want something done right. Action. Okay, Evil Ernie has captured you and tied you down on the sidewalk. In any minute now, the street cleaning truck... How? What? How did he tie me down? With my fight back? I mean, Evil Ernie's not that big. I don't think he... Hey, I'm not paying you to think. Louie, you're not paying me. Oh. Louie! I'm working here. It's Evil Ernie. He won't come out of his dressing room. What seems to be the problem, Mr. Glenn? When I agreed to do your stupid little movie, you promised me snacks, Louis B. Mayer. We got a bowl of sour balls downstairs. No green ones. What? Someone ate all the green ones, and I can't work without green sour balls. You got it. Tommy, more green sour balls. And huh? I'm going to do all my lines with a French accent. Understand, Louis? Or get it. No one messes with my heart. You're fired. Louie, got a minute, kid? It's not a good time, Dad. I haven't seen a lot of screen time yet, and, well, I did give you the camera, remember that? Uh-huh. So I uh, worked up this gag, and, uh, well, uh, maybe it can fit it in. Uh, can I show you? Whatever. <laughs> hey, has anyone seen my tennis ball? So, what do you think? No, I don't know. What kind of fake? Fake? What, is he kidding me? Change of plans. I'm gonna be playing Evil Ernie now. But you're playing Dewey Landerson. Oh, wear a different hat. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I rewrote Janie's scenes. Excuse me? I don't think Janie should be such a victim. See, I see Janie as a take-charge kind of gal who unties herself from the railroad tracks. I want to give her some spunk, some life. Uh-huh. So, what do you think? I think you're fired. Hey, Tommy, put on a wig and tie yourself off. There's turnover on every movie set. Creative differences, scheduling conflicts, you name it. Are you ready? Ready? Action! <laughs> Cut! Uh oh. Tommy! You're fired! My set just happened to have more turnover than most. All right, Louie, I've been working on this all week. Watch this now. So, what do you think? Perfect. Now, can you do it one more time for real? Forgot to focus. What? You know how many bones I just broke? And I appreciate every one of them. Now, whenever you're ready. That's it. I quit. <laughs> and... Action! Uh, darling, if it's not too much bother, could you possibly bring me a beverage that is slightly cooler than room temperature? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no! Is there a problem? Um, how do I put this? You didn't quit that pathology job, did you, Mr. Jensen? Move it, toddler. You're fired. But I didn't do anything. Exactly. Oh, dear. I spent the last weeks of summer and all of my allowance finishing my epic. None of my friends stopped by to see me. Clearly, they all knew how important this movie was to me. I worked all day. Time lost all meaning. Louie, what are you doing? It's 11.30 at night. Art happens at all hours. I finished editing, and it was almost time to let the world share my vision. But first I brought in a test audience. I had to know if the movie was as good as I thought it was. 
It started off beautifully. The credit sequence was perfect. And then it was all downhill from there. Gosh! It was, quite simply, the worst movie ever made. I had wasted my whole summer right there, I decided. I'd never make another movie again. Going. Where else? The movies. What about your little film? Well, what about it? Wait! Hello! Excuse me! Come back! Put little Jeannie's scene back in. How about this? Oh, thank you, honey. She's so cute. And that Grunewald boy, very talented, that one. Hey, kid, show's over. Time to go. I'm waiting for the next one. Yeah, that's nice, but that was the last show of the day. Yeah? So what's your point? Again? How many times have you seen this one? Twenty-two. It's on the house, kid. What? Oh, no! Come back here, you bad person, you! <laughs> Stay right here. I have a plan. Ooh, that's going to hurt in the morning. But hey, that was on me. Jensen didn't do squat. Ah, skip again. Dad? movie didn't make one bit of sense, but no one cared. They loved every frame. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is quite an honor. I want to thank everyone who helped me with my movie, even though you all probably hate me now after I fired every one of you. It turns out that really, only one person should have been fired from my movie. And that's me! Yeah! I especially want to thank my editor, my mom, for digging through the trash and finding the movie I missed. Well, thanks again, everyone. Well, one more thing. I start my next movie tomorrow morning. Anyone who wants to help, meet me at my house at 9 a.m. Donuts are on me! I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mom. Who cares about moon landings and the World Series? You remember what's important to you. Me, I remember every single movie I ever saw. Sweet potatoes! Good morning! Yes, it was fun, wasn't it? And I remember exactly Thanks. where I was when I learned that people can be forgiving. Hey, Louie, over here. Third man on the sidewalk. Am I perfect or what? Ah, incoming! Hey, what do I look like, a speed bump? I changed my mind, Dad. You're hired. All right! Let me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now. It's time again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride. It's like a lackable, lovable company.
They say politics make strange bedfellows. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by bedfellows, but I do know that each year when it came time to elect a new class president, people sure did act strange, even Which me. Which is why, if I were Robin Hood, I'd take the donuts from the people who make them and give them out to the people who love them, like me! Nice job, Louie. I had no idea they had donuts back then. Thank you for <clears throat> that stirring book report, Louie. Wow, she's everywhere. Now don't forget, anyone wishing to run for class president must sign up by the end of the day. Let's see, school ends at 3.32 p.m. That means I have precisely 12,496 seconds to make up my mind. You can't be serious. No member of the chess club has ever run for public office before. It just can't be done. Let's look at this analytically. I can analyze it in three words. You're a Melvin. No offense, of course. My point exactly. Who better could determine what this school needs and how to accomplish it? I say it's time one of us steps out from behind his glasses and... Hey, where'd everybody go? Hey, Mary. Carry your books? Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. That's it. I'm running for president. Because of that? He's carrying her books. Well, not technically. Well, I'm doing it. And, and you're gonna help me. Not me. I need a campaign manager. And you're perfect. Why? You're a man of the masses. You understand the little people. Gee, thanks. And besides, it would spoil my perfect record of non-involvement in school-related activities. Uh, I'm sorry you feel that way, Louie. You leave me no choice but to publicly display this. Hey, that's not fair. I was showing Tommy how to wear those. Thanks, buddy. I knew you'd come around. Guess what? I've decided to run for president. Great! I'm a shoe in What's he talking about? Meet the competition. You're running against Toddler? Uh-huh. And this is my campaign manager. <gasps> hey, wait a minute! All right, then. And I'm Toddler. Come on, Jeannie. Let's get out of here. This is gonna be great. Are you kidding? This is why I never get involved in school activities. Hey, Dad, can I ask you something? Sure, just don't bother me. I'm busy. Where is my lucky bowling talc? Well, what's so lucky about it? You've been using it for years and never win. Never mind that. Check behind that chair. Dad, what's a campaign manager do? That's an interesting question. What campaign? For class president. I'm the campaign manager. Manager, huh? Come on. This thing might be in the mess hall. It's not in here. Why would my lucky talc be in the bread box? Check the fridge. And get me a cold one while you're in there. I didn't choose this, Dad. I was persuaded. Do you realize you'll be taking part in the most hallowed of all American traditions? Public humiliation? I'm talking about politics, democracy, the right to vote, that little thing that separates us from the commies. The who? Lily, it's the reason why heroes like you, man here, fought in the war. I thought you were drafted. That's beside the point. I think what your father's trying to say is people fought in the war to make sure that everyone has freedom. Freedom to vote, freedom to believe, freedom to say whatever they want. Anyone seen my talc? Okay, I understand what the voters do, but I'm the campaign manager. What am I supposed to do? If it was me, I'd make some signs for my candidate. That's a good idea. Well, what should they say? Well, what's your candidate's name? Uh, Grunewald? Grunewald? Oh. Andy. Let's see a sign. That's easy. How about Michael Grunewald for president? Vote for the other guy if you know what's good for you. I know. What about I like Mike? Thanks, Mom. That's great. You can't write that. That belongs to General Dwight D. Eisenhower. I know, dear, but... Let that kid go to war first if he wants to steal like slogans. Hey, Dad, is this what you were looking for? Uh -huh. Yeah, sorry. You're all out. Hey, the playoffs start tonight. I can't bowl without my lucky talc. Can't bowl with it either. I heard that. 
Here you go, Andy. Uh, thanks, honey. It's a bow-off, not a bake-off. Uh, I'll have you know things are going to be different this year. We've got a secret weapon. <laughs> That's probably him now. Hey, kid, how you doing? Put her there. Huh? Oh, gibble, gibble! That's my bully hand! <laughs> what do you say? Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go! Jeez, Anderson, your son shakes like my sister. Mm. Sorry, Andy. Ingrown thumbnail. Listen, Grunwald, it's time for a change. You're leaving more pins standing out there than I have offspring. Well, you know what? I'm just a little nervous. That's all. I mean, next time I'll... There's not gonna be a next time. I'm bringing in the big gun. But how can you? We're in a war here. And it's my job to make sure we win it. But, buddy, I... This is how it's gonna be. You just sprained your wrist on the last throw, see? But my wrist is fine! And Jack here is taking your place. Where'd he come from? You want to win the trophy, don't you? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Grooney. We've got a casualty over here. Man down in lane four. Look like you're in pain. I repeat, man down in lane four. Okay, Jack, you're up. Where did you win the ball? You got some technique. Jack, you did it. Oh, I just can't. Jack's the name, and I'm back. Jack is back. Looks like a serious sprain, Earl. Guess you're gonna have to sit on next week too. Hello, competitor. Listen, Mel. I know I'm not your campaign manager, but if you don't mind me saying. No one's going to use that. As I watched my classmates fill up Melvin's suggestion box, it occurred to me, maybe it was time for my candidate and I to take a cold, hard look at Cedar Knoll Elementary School. See, I told you. We need bigger ones. Make a note of that. Got it, Louie. Next. 20 minutes? They call that recess. The guy barely has a chance to break a sweat. Don't tell me. You were just about to stand up, weren't you, Louie? All I'm saying is we could use a longer recess. Excellent idea, Louie. I told you you'd be good at this. Hey, Louie! Ugh, that's disgusting. What we need around here is separate shower stalls. A little privacy would be nice. We have dignity. So what if we're eight years old? Boy, do I hate lima beans. Another good one, Louie. Really? Yeah, no more lima beans. No more lima beans. That's it. No more lima beans. No more lima beans. Stand up. Now louder. No more lima beans. No more lima beans. No more lima beans. No more lima beans. No. Excuse me, Mr. President. The unit drink, huh? This election is ours, my friend. Maybe you should start working on my victory speech. Oh, yeah. I'll get right on that. How to improve Cedar Knoll Elementary School in 12 easy steps. 12 steps? We only have four. Now they guaranteed to make our school a better place, or I will personally do your math homework for one full week. And so the toddler, who later grew up to be toddler, was well on his way towards greatness. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your support. Don't worry, Goon. This is just Hollywood fluff. You're not about that stuff. You're about bigger things, like lima beans and, uh, well, lima beans. You know, for the right price, I could throw a few folks your way. Great. No, thanks. We're not interested. We're not? We'll see about that. You'll be begging for my help before this is over. Hey, my favorite chocolate cake. It's from Mr. Grunwald. He hurt his wrist bowling, you know. Well, you won't be able to eat cake with an injured wrist. Better give it to me. Too bad about Earl. You know how much he loves that game, poor dear. I'll have you know that poor dear was sending my team into the gutter with every one of his gutter balls. Oh, Andy. So I explained to him that he might need some time off. You benched him, huh, Dad? Andy, Earl's been on your team for ten years. You don't understand. 
This is about winning and bowling. Winning is that important? Are you kidding? It's everything. No one remembers the losers. You lose every year. We never forget that. The point is, if you want to win at play, you've got to play to win. Well, all I'm saying is, if you're not careful, you're going to wind up with a trophy on your mantle and no friends on your couch. Hmm. Does that work with the in-laws, too? Step right up. Get a big smooch from the next president. A kid who hates lima beans as much as he loves all of you. Michael Grunewald. I'll vote for you, Michael. If you kiss my turtle. Mm -hmm. Politics. You've seen the movie. Now meet him in person. The one, the only, toddler. Hey, everyone. Hi. Lima beans are not the issue. Making real improvements to our school is the issue. Free lollipops right here. Free night sniffer comic books. We don't have any comics. Free algebra tutoring. So where are the comics? Papa Lou? Uh, stop by my house later. I'll let you have a look at them. Yes! Get your cameras! I'm gonna be on Sunday morning TV! Yes! Jack is a monster! With Skyk after Skyk, he sends the cheese heads up the victory ladder! Go get them, Jensen! Don't choke. Jeez, Jensen, next time you want to put some power into it, you got no follow-through! And there's another strike for a Thunderbolt Jack. He is relentless. Guess I did it again, eh, boys? You gotta pay attention, you might learn a thing or two. Listen, pal, I'll have you know that last year... Stow it, Grunwald. Who cares about last year? I'm here now. Come on, Anderson, I'm ready to shove off. You want to drive me home or what? Well, um, it is on my route. Could you believe it? And then Jensen missed that spare. I mean, come on, I was on him all night. I told him he was hooking it. All right, all right, all I'm saying is we need some discipline. And it wouldn't hurt to sprain a few more wrists, if you know what I mean, eh? I can think of something else I'd like to sprain. And in the last round, each candidate will get 30 seconds for rebuttal. Shake hands and come out debating. <clears throat> Mr. Grunewald, we'll hear from you first. Guys, I've got one thing to say. Friends don't let friends eat lima beans. I'm afraid this election is about more than vegetables. I say it's about recess. Nice long ones that last for hours, days, months. Fellow students, fellow opponents, fellow Melvins, I'm sure we could all use better food in a longer recess, but let's be serious for a minute. What we really need is desks that don't wobble, books without dog-eared pages, an encyclopedia that's not missing the letters A through E. Hey, go back to your weenie chess games. <laughs> Lover, recess hater, teacher's pet, turtle kisser, good ladies and gentlemen, come to order! Good shot, Dad. Louie, you made me miss. I should have went with the end dive. Mom says she needs the ketchup for dinner, Dad. No, that's the four pin. She can have the string beans. That's nothing but trouble. I'm a little off my game. If I don't come up with something quick, we're gonna lose. You're not alone on that. Steady the three pin now, Louie. Dad, you're not listening. We're way behind in the polls. Toddler's gonna be president. Of course he is. You backed the wrong guy. We're getting trounced. Now's the time to get tough. Huh? Do I look like a loser to you? Gee, you're putting a guy on a spot. Of course not. Because we Andersons are winners. Sure, we may lose all the time, but deep down, we're winners. We'll do whatever it takes to win. Go to any lengths, make any sacrifice. Andy? Louie? Dinner? Come on, Louie. I'm hungry. Grab the canned asparagus, will you? 
Gus and Goon. It's time we stopped fooling around and won this thing. We're 20 points behind in the polls. We are? Okay, Glenn, Glenn. <laughs> you want to make a deal? Thanks, Lou, you got my vote. Glad to see you came to your senses, Anderson. But now it's gonna cost you. What do you want? I spread one bona fide rumor about toddler. You give me your dessert for a month. A month? Okay, two months. And, and eat my lima beans. Okay, okay. Oh, what do you got? I got just a thing. How would you like toddler skip recess? But he <laughs> wants recess. Uh, I don't know. It's a deal, Louie. Okay, you're on. Hey there, Goonie. We're all behind you, pal! <laughs> uh. Your attention, please! The award for perfect attendance this month goes to none other than Perfect Little Toddler! Oh, that's gonna ruin me. Catch a special on uh, duct tape there, four rolls for a buck. Great. I could use something to support this weak wrist of mine. Well, it looks like even Captain Andy has buckled under the pressure. One more loss and the cheese heads are out of it. Say, Anderson, looks like you sprained your wrist. My wrist is fine. <laughs> Let me show you how the gladiators do it. Okay? And the cheeseheads win again! No thanks to Anderson. May the best man win. The envelope, please. And the winner is... Melvin Fishbeats. Congratulations, Melvin, on a job well done. Watching Melvin take his place as president, I realized that indeed the best man had won. While the rest of us were busy dragging each other through the mud, Melvin had remained a man of ideas and principles. Evidently, everyone voted for Melvin. Even me. Sorry about the perfect attendance thing, Jeannie. We know Toddler had the chicken pox. That's okay, Louie. About that sign, we had no idea so many people would actually kick you. Uh, don't worry about it. I spent the day in the nurse's office. And I got out of all my classes. And Toddler. Mike and I feel really bad about telling people you still suck your thumb. Gee, thanks, Louie. We know you stopped that weeks ago. Hey, it's been two months. Hey, wait up for me! <laughs> and the cheeseheads need a strike here to stay in the competition. Hey, uh, how you feeling, pal? Uh, Never better. I'm one strike away from a perfect game. Press here yet? Hmm? Well, it looks to me like your head is swelling up. Sit down! Are you nuts? We're ten points away from the championship! That's me, Nutso Anderson. Now, sit down! Grunwald, grab a ball. Sorry, Earl. I should have done that days ago. Thanks, Andy. You're a great friend, a great neighbor, a great pal, a great buddy. Get this ball already! Another joke for the cheeseheads. Great call, Anderson. Well, the new administration took some getting used to. It turned out Melvin was pro lima beans. On the other hand, the new encyclopedia was sure going to come in handy when I did my report on the history of donuts. No. Oh. Great. Another cheesehead in the making. What did you say that was called? Beginner's Lunch? Oh. Right! Let me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now, it's that time again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride, no surprise. It's life with Louie, Louie, Louie. Life with Louie, Louie, Louie. It's life with life. Lovable, completely huggable. It's life with Louie. 
Your scientist will tell you that the average eight-year-old has spent six months of his life eating meals, 11 months of his life watching TV, and three years of his life asleep. Climb up the side, and then boom! Mortar shells are exploding right in front of my nose! Are you listening, Larry? Oh, to be the average eight-year-old. Help yourself, boys. Eat up before it gets cold. Uh, uh. It reminds me of some field surgery I had to perform on my buddy when I was liberating France with the Fighting Fifth. <laughs> Here we go. It was a little village of, uh, Eclair. How about the mashed potatoes, Dad? Oh, yeah, perfect. Let's see. There were enemy machine gun nests here and here and here. Uh, my buddy in Huckleberry gets caught in the crossfire. He says, Andy, I can't feel my leg. Andy. So I take out my Norwegian army knife and I open him up right there. Ugh, this is gross. I'm out of here. Turns out he's got an enlarged spleen. That's gotta go. A ruptured appendix. That's gotta go. A busted up pelvis. That's it for me. Bon appetit. So I remove the infected organs, hatch up the bullet holes with mud and pine cones. Now, you think a guy couldn't walk after something like that. But me and Huckleberry went on to single-handedly rouse the Germans from the Riviera. And he's dancing the hoochie coochie at the officer's club that day. Who wants seconds? I'm done. I calculated that in my eight years of life, I'd actually spent nine and a half years listening to Dad's war stories. Next. Three, please. Eight. Two. Got a little cold, huh? Reminds me of the time I was dropped behind enemy lines in Eastern Europe with nothing but the clothes on my back and a nasty head cold. Oh, what a mess. Oh, man. I was with the Fighting Fifth at the time. See, I was their advance man. I was, uh, the hunter. But little did I know, the hunter was being hunted. Ha, 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 And if it weren't for that sneeze, launching a flock of Bulgarian geese, the Fighting Fifth would have never liberated Eastern Slovakia. So, my little reserves, are you ready for the movie? If you hurry, you can still catch the end credits. What? We missed it, huh? How did that happen? I'll give you two guesses. Reminds me of the time I missed the USO show because I'd been red-tailed by the Lithuanian... Every resistance. time my dad opened his mouth, another precious hour of my life just seemed to disappear. If I never heard another story about dad and the fabulous fighting fifth, it would be far too soon. What is that? Attention, boys and girls. It is my great privilege to announce the kickoff of a very special week. The 15th reunion of our very own Cedar Knoll Fighting 5th Regiment that distinguished itself during the Second World War. Mm. For a whole week, the school went war happy. It was a mandate. Every activity had to have something to do with the reunion. <laughs> oh. But then... In the fourth period English class, my whole world changed. Does anyone know what oral history is? The story of dental floss? <laughs> the story of toothbrushes? What? Dental floss is funny, but toothbrushes gets me nothing? Oral histories are the traditions that are passed down from generation to generation. So, as part of the 15th reunion celebration, every one of you will give an oral history of what your father <coughs> or mother did during the war. Yes, Louie? Just one question. Are we going to be graded on this? so sure you're gonna get an A. Are you kidding? No one's waiting for me at home. A plate full of high cholesterol cookies? The Fort Knox of War Stories. The mother load. It's time eight years of bone-breaking boredom started to pay off. <laughs> Andy, what's the matter? You're crying. Tears of happiness, dear. <laughs> Tears of happiness. This is the happiest day of my life. Really? Happier than the day we got married? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, oh, what's the right answer here? 
Ah, uh, of course not, honey. It's the second happiest day of my life. That's what I thought you meant. It's just that Louie asked me to tell him all my war stories about my days with the Fighting Fifth. Can you believe it, honey? He asked? Exactly. Our Louie? Yes, our Louie. It's just hard to swallow, that's all. No harder than this meatloaf, I'll tell you that. Ugh. Are you all right, Louie? I'm fine, Mom. You're not really going to listen to all your dad's war stories, are you? Of course not. I'm going to write them all down. My favorite son uh, wants to record my wartime experiences. Is that so wrong? The document will be like uh, the Declaration of Independence, uh, Magna Carta. Uh, is that right, son? Whatever. Love that enthusiasm, kid. I love it. So, the Fighting Fifth were being airlifted into Finland, parachutes and all, only the hatch won't open, and we're under enemy fire. I'm shooting back with both hands, and I have to use my teeth, actually, my molars, to open the hatch. Right Things were lucky. Only the tank gun, it's jammed. I look at the instrument panel, and it's all written in German. So quickly, before you can say Gertelsberg, I learned German and managed to unstick the gun before my buddies could slaughter. It was close. Yeah. And the fighting fifth is stuck. No way to get to the safety of the forest without being spotted by the enemy until I see a herd of cows grazing in the field. So I start wooing my brains out. Cause a cow stampede, which provides the perfect distraction. And for that display of courage to miss the bovine, I got the Golden Calf Award. What's the problem? You didn't write it down. Sorry, Dad. Carpal tunnel setting in. Does that after 13 hours of writing? Ugh, public schools. What kind of school doesn't teach a boy to write with either hand? It's getting late. Are you two almost through? Home stretch. 1945. A few months of the occupation, and we are done. Can't you finish tomorrow? It's a school night. No. I have to present the oral history tomorrow. It's the kickoff of the big reunion. That's right. You hear that? What reunion? The Fighting Fifth. It's your big 15th reunion. What? Come on, Dad. Don't pretend you don't know about the reunion. We're done here. Wait, Dad. What about the last year of the war, 1945? I was in prison camp. I don't like to talk about it. Good night, dear. And that's how women working in defense plants help to defeat the godforsaken, evil, swilling enemy. Thank you, Miss Harper, and thank your mother for her inspirational riveting. Next is Louie Anderson. I hope you all wore comfortable pants, because we're going to be here a while. My father, Andy Anderson, was the most decorated corporal in the history of the Fighting Fifth Regiment. Lights. The Spanish-American War. My dad started his military career as an intern. You know, delivering mail for the Spanish, that kind of thing. And with that kind of war record, it was only natural for FDR to give him a call when the big WW2 reared its ugly head. Any questions? Oh, oh, me, me. Oh, oh, me, me. Yes, Melvin. Let's review. It's 6 a.m., your dad is here, single-handedly saving a vineyard outside of Paris. At noon, he's here, using his big toe to wipe out an entire platoon outside of Italy. Four hours later, he's here, driving a tank across northern Africa. So what's your point? What's my point? It just sounds pretty implausible to me. Improbable. Not very likely. Furthermore, the Spanish-American War took place in 1898. World War II in 1941. By all estimations, that would make your dad 112 years old. Well, you know, he doesn't look a day over 102. Tell you what, Louie. Perhaps you should go back and check the veracity of your dad's war record. I copied it down word for word. I had three tape recorders. Louie, go find the truth and come back tomorrow and give us another report. What's the big idea? You tell me, Dad. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about three little letters, I and C. I and C? What do those clowns want? I got my green card. I'm a citizen. 
Stands for incomplete, Dad. That's when I got on my oral report. Incomplete, huh? What's the problem? Got too choked up talking about your old man? Couldn't get through the whole thing? Uh, no. Problem was they couldn't swallow it. Mr. Lambert said no one person could have done everything you did. Exactly what Ike said when he gave me the golden calf. I tell you that story? Dad, they said I exaggerated. Spun a couple of whoppers, did you? Understandable. You got carried away. It happens. Really? Did it happen to you? I mean, you told me a lot of stories, Dad. Did you maybe get confused on the date? Add something to a story when you should have subtracted? Who's your teacher? Mr. Lambert. And what did Mr. Lambert do during the war? Apparently, he taught field hygiene. Right. How to care for your toilet paper. You ever hear the expression, Louie, those who do, do, and those who can't do, don't believe those who did, do, huh? Your dad's stories are, well, they're intended to create a visual impression and experience, dear. So, yes or no, are they true? Your dad is an artist, Louie. And as an artist, it's the spirit of your dad's experience that he's telling you. That's where the truth lies. So you're saying the truth is that I can expect the spirit of an F when I deliver my report. Thanks for clearing things up, Mom. The next day, the big reunion began. The Fighting Fifth invaded Cedar Knoll. If anyone could clear up the mystery behind my dad's war record, these were the guys to do it. What the heck is that? What's the Cedar Knoll? Replica of the landing craft that put us ashore on Normandy Beach. My dad was in the Fighting Fifth. Corporal Andy Anderson, you know him? Hmm, doesn't ring any bells. Tall, small eyes. Head comes to a point, his chin sticks out. You know, pencil neck. What'd your dad do, son? Radio operator? Doughboy? Corman? Plus, he was a tank driver, forward scout, tail gunner, bridge builder, and field surgeon. He performed appendectomies with his Norwegian army knife. Hmm, busy guy, your dad. Why don't you check the unit photo over at the VFW hall? Maybe your dad joined when he was underage. Right, he took somebody else's identity. Like uh, those escaped cons out of Long Island. Exactly. And then he took his real name back after the war. Yeah, that could have happened. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Not even a little. None. But still, uh, stranger things have happened, right? Well, no. That looks like him. That guy? My dad doesn't have a tail. Hey, cut me some slack. I'm just trying to help. Louie's dad may have used an assumed name toddler, but he didn't assume a whole new species. It was time to face the facts. My dad... Let's just say that my dad had been an interior decorator in the big room of truth. Uh, hey, Dad. Big day tomorrow, huh? Got that right, kid. Gonna sheetrock the bomb shelter. Oh, good thinking. I'm talking about the reunion. The Fighting Fifth. Bet you can't wait to see your buddies. You know, share war stories, old memories. Things that never happened to you. Nah, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Why not? I don't believe in reunions. Well, you went to your high school reunion. My old uniform doesn't fit. You were wearing it the last weekend. Mom let it out. I'm gonna be at Sunday Mass. Tomorrow's Saturday. It's the Sabbath. I converted. Hey, Dad, did you ever go by another name other than Anderson? Yeah. I used to be called, go to bed now before I get really mad Anderson. Hmm. Long name. Probably changed it at Ellis Island. Maybe my dad could live a lie. But sure as my name was Louie, go to bed now before I get really mad Anderson. I couldn't. Oh, yeah. oh, let me think of the war happier times, huh? Ah, it takes me back. <gasps> Come on, Louie. He didn't lie, exactly. He told me stuff that wasn't true. What would you call it? A fib. An embellishment. He was weaving a line of narrative tapestry. What? The fighting fifth were pinned down behind some hills alongside a farmhouse. Wait a minute. I know this story. The enemy My dad was at this battle. It's the road. It didn't look good until one Corporal Humperdinck, who grew up on a farm, did some cow calls. 
Oh, bird dang. And having grown up oh. on a farm, he knew exactly what cow calls to make. Uh, uh, to cause the cows to stampede, creating the distraction that allowed the fighting fifth to escape. Oh, wow. Anderson. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. Yum, right there. And are you all right? Uh, fine, all right. Hey, guys, look, it's Corporal Keister. Keister, you old dog. Where you been, Keister boy? <laughs> Saving our tails again. You can always count on Keister. Dad? This is your dad? Why didn't you say so? I did. Andy Anderson. Andy who? I'll handle this. I'm Corporal Keister, son. It's a nickname. Huh? Got it at the beginning of the war. How come I never heard it? Because I was embarrassed. It's not exactly how a guy wants to be remembered. It all started at Pearl Harbor, Louis. Wasn't it the Solomon Islands? I think it was the Philippines. Whatever. It was the islands, all right? As the platoon cook, I was always the first one up in the morning making breakfast while everyone else slept. Little did I know, at that very moment, the enemy was preparing a sneak attack. Now, I guess this particular kitchen was a little more cramped than most. story of how I saved the fighting fifths behind. Of course, I can sit for a week. So that's why they call you Corporal Keister. Yeah, I guess the name just stuck. It wouldn't have been the same without you, Keister. And not to mention the fact that you saved our Keisters again. Well, why weren't you in the company picture? Well, I can answer that. Keister here took the picture. <laughs> if you're humiliated, I understand, Louie. You want to change your name, son? That's all right with me. As long as I can change it to Keister. What's that? I'm proud to be a Keister, Dad. Let's go, Keister. I mean, Anderson. It's time. They're unveiling the monument. This monument is dedicated to the men of the Fighting Fifth Regiment. Heroes captured in their finest moment. Captured you in your finest moment. Oh dear. Yeah, perfect resemblance. Not entirely perfect, but it'll do. Look, Dad, they even included the ID number from that stove right on your left cheek. I'm proud of you, Dad. <laughs> I hope that one day my keister will save the United States of America. Not to worry, kid. You got the Anderson keister. You're on your way. Expectations. We all have them. Fathers for their sons, and sons for their fathers. My dad was a hero after all. Just not the kind of hero he thought his son would appreciate. But he was wrong. Let me tell you a little story. You with me? No. 
me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now, it's bedtime again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride, no surprise. It's life with Louie, Louie, Louie. Life with Louie, Louie, Louie. It's life with likeable, lovable, completely huggable. It's life with Louie. Every family has its own traditions. Outdoor barbecues, summer vacations by the lake, Uncle Monty wearing golf pants at Thanksgiving dinner. At my house, the most sacred of all these traditions was Sunday football games with the Green Bay Packers. And everyone loved watching them. Hmm. You call that defense? <laughs> if I would have defended my country like that, we'd all be eating star out for breakfast. <laughs> On that note, When's lunch? What kind of Packer fan are you? A hungry one. You know, Larry, you'll never make the team with an attitude like that. Make the team do what? Make the team play football, become a Packer. Louie's going to be a Packer? You got that right. A linebacker like Nitschke. Andy, he's only eight years old. Nonsense. You got to get him when they're young. Who was that uh, kid who was playing piano there when he was three? Oh. Mozart? Yeah, that's the guy. Mozart was a Packer? The point is, I've got tickets to next week's game. And it's your turn to come with me this year. Can I come too? Now, Tommy, you know your father can only afford two tickets a year. I'll bring you next year, son. You're next in line. Hey, that's not fair. Just because I'm older doesn't mean I should get to do all the fun things. Hmm, maybe Tommy should stay up later and get a bigger allowance, too. What do you think of that, kid? Like I always say, go Packers! That's the spirit, Louie. Just remember the rules, Andy. Two Andersons go to the game, two Andersons come home from the game. What are you talking about? Sid came home. Thanks to that kindly parking attendant. What happened? Your father was so determined to get on the field and meet Coach Vince, but he left poor little Sid all alone. Alone? The stadium was packed. The worst part is, your father didn't even realize he'd left him behind. No, the worst part is, I never got to meet Coach Ben. Andy. Ah, an exception. Oh, no. I should never take my eyes off that TV. It was then I realized the Packer game with Dad was inevitable. Pass the potatoes, please, Dan. That was a heck of a game. Oh. Reminds me of my own days on the field. <laughs> Did I ever tell you boys about the Anderson riffle? There was one second on the clock. We were down by six. Come on, kids. I'm going to show you how it's done. Oh, Andy, not in the house. That's the problem with it. Got no spirit. What am I going to tell Coach Vince? And my own flesh and blood doesn't even give a hoot about Packer football. Ah. But, Dad, you've never even gotten close to Coach Vince. Did General Patton ever surrender? No. Did MacArthur ever retreat? No. Am I going to give up on trying to meet Vince? Not on your life, Louie. Now watch closely, boys. I've got it all set up for the Anderson Ripple. Go, go! Touchdown! See? Works every time. You yeah, know, right, Dad. My dad. He wants me to memorize everything in it. It's just names, numbers, and stats. Huh. Like there's stuff in there you don't already know? You know, Bart Star. Number 15. 6'1", 200 pounds. 57% completion percentage. How do you guys know all this stuff? You're the Packers. What's so great about the Packers, anyhow? Other than Bart Star, there's Coach Vince, Paul Hornick, Ray Nitschke. Bless you. Very funny, Louie. You're talking about a football team. How ridiculous. And this is a dog who solves crimes. You don't sound like you're much of a Packer fan, Louie. I have no choice. My dad's taking me to the game Sunday. Wow! Really? You are so lucky, Louie. Just think, you'll be at the game with the real fans while the rest of us stay home and watch it on TV. Fine. Rub it in. Let's go, Louie. It's game day. Dad, it's freezing. Freezing? 
With the wind chill, it's only 30 below. And you're happy about this? Of course. It's Packer weather. The lightweights from Chicago are probably used to only 15 below. They're gonna get iced. <laughs> what about us? Don't worry about a thing, Willie. I got something for the cold. Thanks. Where's the lining? Come on, son. Let's see what you look like. Ah, you look great, kid. I wish I had a camera. All right, let's get down to breakfast. So, roughly speaking, Mom, when do you think we'll be home? Well, dear, the game usually takes three to four hours. Come on, Louie. We better hit the road. Hey, Louie, if you don't come back, can I have your room? Here you go, my little Packer fans. I packed you a lunch. <laughs> Sandwiches, cookies, potato chips. It was the first ray of hope in an otherwise grim-looking expedition. Hot chocolate to keep you and Dad warm and toasty. Uh, happy day. I have an idea. We could just stay home. No. Oh, hi, Dina. Yeah, Let's you're just go, leaving. soldier. Pick up your rations and move it out. Packers! Go soak your head. <laughs> this face. I'm with him. I'd never seen anything like it. People greeting each other with open arms and plates full of food. Suddenly, I felt like a Packer fan. Hurry up, Louie. It's game time. But then, there's barbecued pork over here. It's free. Hey, kid, don't forget to enter the punt, pass, and kick contest. Wow. Where do I sign up? Uh, Dan, I think our seats are up there. Nah, stick with me, kid. I'll teach you a thing or two. <laughs> Never let a ticket come between you and a great seat. Look, the invincible one. Louie. That man is a legend. One day, they're gonna name a trophy after him. Dad, you're not gonna try and meet him again this year, are you? Are you kidding? All I have to do is catapult over the railing, sneak past the guards, crawl under the bench, and then ambush him. Uh, good plan, Dad. May I see your tickets, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You're gonna have to move. Your seats are up there. Sorry about that, Mrs. Nitschke. Here you go. This is outrageous. This is un-American. Uh, here we are, Dad. The Andersons have landed. I may as well be sitting in France. Excuse me. Pardon me. Packer fans coming through. Crush those bears! Crush them! Pound them! Slaughter them! Come to think of it, I might be safer wandering the parking lot. Great seats, Dad. I can't see a thing. Here, Larry. Try these. Always work for spotting the enemy. Whoopee. Come here, let me help you out, kid. Oh, that's okay, Dad. You can use them. Besides, I need both hands to keep warm. What are you talking about? The sun's out. Oh, man. You gotta be kidding me. Another one. I don't know how those French women managed to make a meal out of this. Speaking of the French, did I tell you what happened to my mother-in-law yesterday? Oh, you mean the one that lives in Memphis? She was at the Piggly Wiggly, when who should she spot but Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley? Oh, my. Hmm, there he was, stuffing his cart full of peanut butter and bananas. He ought to learn to eat better. Or mark my words, that man's gonna blow up like a balloon. Elvis, Elvis, fat. Fat. Elvis never. 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 There's the pass. Oh. Look out! Oh. Come on, boys. Hit him harder. 
looking good, Dad. Hey, Mott's here. Peanut's here. Oh, popcorn over here. Try yelling at the players, Louie. What for? I have no idea what's going on. All right, son. You see the two end zones at either end of the field? Think of those as two huge donut stars. Do they have jelly filled? They've got everything. That's why all the players are trying to get in. But you can't get in without the key. And the key is the football. That's football? That's football. Come on, Packers. Crush them, powder them, deep fry them, glaze them, jelly them. All right! He drops back. Loose ball. Jagers dives for it. Touchdown, Chicago. The Bears, yeah, they're eating our donuts. You're right, Willie. You've got to do something. Where are you going? I've got to get down there and teach Vince how to run the Anderson Riffle. You ain't here. Two claps, three hearts, four claps, five hearts. You know, Dina, you're not the only one to know someone who saw someone famous once. Really? Yeah. Earl and I were in Las Vegas a few years back. Suddenly, he heard this voice. He turned around. And who should it be but Anne Margaret? You mean the lady who works at the Dairy Freeze? No, not her. Go on, Kitty, tell me more. <laughs> well, there they are, Anne Margaret and my Earl together. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> For me. Of course not. We've got more guards down there this year. Attention, all participants in the punt, pass, and kick competition, please report to the field. We better get down there, Louie. It's time to show them what you got. What, frostbite? You're gonna enter the contest. But, Dad... Don't worry, Louie. You were born for this. You're an Anderson. Oh, that puts me at ease. Here come the few Sorry, pal. Kids only. I'm a kid at heart. <laughs> yeah, nice try, Junior. Back to your seat. Hi. Hey, your dad put you up to this? Yeah. Mine, too. Tell me about it. Packers this, Packers that. Driving me crazy. Well, good luck. You, too. Uh, there's an interesting throw. <laughs> File that one under. Nice try. There's the kick. Look at that thing fly. Next, we have place kicking. Oh, through the goalposts. I believe we have a winner in the house. Congratulations. Let's give a big hand to our winner. Hey, congratulations. Thanks, but I don't know how I'm ever going to tell my dad I don't want to play pro ball. You don't? No, I want to be a flutist. Musicians are good, but I doubt you can throw a flute that far. You should think about it. Think so? Hands off. That one's for the coach. Hey, you bring water to Coach Vince? Uh, yeah. I'm a water boy. That's what water boys do. <sighs> that was good. Mm, great. Attention, the owner of a beat-up green Rambler. Your lights are on, and your tire's flat, too. Look out! Oh. Okay, troops, so we're surrounded. But we're not giving up, because I've got a plan. Now bring it in. Let's see, I'm gonna need your hat, and uh, your camera, and uh, uh... Bunt cake, anyone? Did I ever tell you what happened to me when I visited my sister in California? I'll just go percolate some coffee. I was at the Brown Derby, when who should sit down in the booth next to mine but John Wayne? Ooh, is he as handsome as Elvis? Absolutely dreamy. <laughs> Goodness. I wonder if Aura has ever met anyone famous. Well, I don't know. Hmm. Let's ask. Coffee? Aura, you've been very quiet this afternoon. Surely someone in your family has had a brush with a celebrity. No, I don't believe so. 
Although I have chatted with Anne Margaret from the Dairy Freeze. All right, move aside. Uh, reporter here. Hold it right there, pal. Where do you think you're going? Just doing my job. Doing your job, huh? Yeah, funny, I've never seen you here before. Tell me, who's the Packers' all-time leader in receptions? Don Hudson with 488. How many points did Paul Hornick score in 61? Easy, 146. What's Ray Nitschke's favorite movie? Uh, ah, the new Rockney story. Uh, sorry, pal, sound the music. Let's get you back to your real seat, okay? Come on, hey, turn around. I gotta get to the coach. I can win this Poor game. Dad. Once again, he Go failed on. to get the riffle to Coach Vince. I thought, perhaps, I could give it a shot. <laughs> Looking a little tired there, buddy. What do you want? Can I give it a go? Yeah, right. I've got the new night sniffer. Uh, one apiece, don't spill. Right, okay, right, that's enough for you. Right, this, this, this is it. It's time to find out what you're made of. Time to send those bears back to Chi-Town with their tails between their legs. Time to... <laughs> back off, boys. Coach needs water. Hey, that's my kid next to Vince. He's gonna give him the play. He's gonna give him the play. Little H2O coach. Thanks, kid. Look, I know I'm only the water boy. Actually, I'm not even the water boy. I'm just filling in. Anyway, the truth is... Get to the point, kid. The game's almost over and I'm down by six. I think you should try the Anderson Riffle. Did you say the Anderson Riffle? You heard of it? I'll say... 20 years ago, I coached high school ball. Some kid named Crazy Legs Anderson used the riffle to beat me. I've been trying to figure it out ever since. Well, I'm Crazy Legs Jr., and I know how it works. Okay, hot lap, I said hot lap, hot lap, hot lap, snap to it! And listen to the kid, he's got a great play! Great play? That's a kid who came in last in the pump, pass, and kick competition. Great coaches aren't necessarily great players. Listen up. Here's how it goes. Pack is down by six with two seconds on the clock. It all boils down to this, folks. Pan hits and drops back. Chicago blitzes. for years. I bet you have. You're just lucky my kid begged me to disclose the riffle mm. to him. More coffee, Dina? Now, Aura, you must at least know someone who knows someone who met someone famous. I have an idea. Why don't we see how the Packers are doing? You know, they're playing the monsters of the Midway. Looks like Coach Vince has found a long lost Is that over your there. husband? Oh, my stars. I don't think... No, she's right. And he has his arm around Coach Vince. Look. Gracious me, it is Andy. How long have they been friends? Goodness. This is so exciting. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Oh, they look so happy together. They must be old friends. Don't you think they look like old friends? Well, actually, I, I'd like to... Come on, come on. Come on, no, stop closing it on me. I'm proud of you, son. Even if I, uh, never become a Packer? Just because you won't be a Packer doesn't mean you can't be a hero. Hey! I'm the hero of the game! Come back here! He got it! Oh, run! He's open! Oh, run! He's got it! Run! 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 Touchdown! I'm telling you, that Vince is a genius. Genius! Did I ever tell you about the Statue of Liberty play? I invented that play. That's right. It 
first came to me as I approached Ellis Island as a youth from my homeland of sweet. Nothing more fun than watching a little pig skin with dear old dad. Let me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now, it's that time again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride, no surprise. It's life with Louie, Louie, Louie. Life with Louie, Louie, Louie. It's life with likeable, lovable, completely huggable. It's life with Louie. When Principal Holleran made a visit to our classroom, it usually meant one of two things. Either Glenglen had been caught mixing pencil shavings into the cafeteria food again, or we were having a substitute. Mr. Lambert will not be here this week. Now I want everyone on their best behavior for Miss Robertson. Hello. Top of the morning to you, class. Mm -hmm. I see we'll have to have a little chat about the dress code. Let's say we begin by introducing ourselves, shall we? I'm Miss Robertson, and you are? Uh, uh, Drawing! Uh. <laughs> My, aren't we the studious one? That's me, Mr. Studious. Oh, brother. You really are stuck on her, aren't you, Mr. Studious? Why would you say that? Because you just put all of your books in my locker. They were lonely. Oh, shovel one, shovel two, shovel three, save us from the communists! All 600? Huh. Time to hit the showers. Rub a dubby, rub a dubby, morning is the greatest time. Who's in here? Top of the morning, Dad. Really? Aren't you the one I have to yank out of bed every morning? That one's the old Louie, Dad. Is that so? Natural scent. I thought the idea was to get rid of the natural scent. My goodness, you look handsome this morning, Louie. Is it class picture day? Jeez. I drag a comb through my hair and suddenly it has to be class picture day? You'll have to change out of those fancy duds after school because we've got a project to finish. Oh, good. You're finally taking down Mrs. Stoneman's Christmas lights? Yeah, right. Andy. Lay, I need your help with my bomb shelter. Besides, you're the oldest. Well, Danny's the oldest. Why don't you ask him? Oh, yeah, sure, Dad. I'll be right there to help you. Have fun. <laughs> need I say more? You know, Andy, that dirt hole in the yard has become a real eyesore. Why don't we just fill it with water and have a pool party? And my bomb shelter? Next thing you know, you'll want to be swimming with the enemy. And another thing, I don't see how we're going to squeeze all our neighbors in there, Andy. We can't just leave them out, you know. Why not? They didn't invite me to their canasta tournament. Hmm, they're lost, huh, Dad? Well, besides, if the unspeakable happens, there's strength in numbers. Ah, I think you've got something there, Hora. Gracious me, you're here early. Crumpet? I'm more of a donut man myself, but... I'll give it a shot. It was a perfect moment. Just me, a crumpet, and the woman of my dreams. Morning, Miss Robertson. Oh, thank you, Michael. That's quite thoughtful. I thought so. Hey, those are my mom's petunias. The flower shop was out of my way. It's one of my dad's formaldehyde jars. He's a pathologist, you know. Oh, how unusual. Um, but let's put it here for safekeeping. We wouldn't want it to break. Well, that'd be a heartbreaker. It's oregano. I made it from a night sniffer comic. Hey, that's the one I loaned you. Obviously, I wasn't the only one trying to impress Miss Robertson. It's too ply. Thank you. This morning, I'd like to introduce you to a very special author. His name is William Shakespeare, and he wrote some of the world's most beautiful stories. Mm. No, not him. <sighs> huh. Can anyone name one of them? Um, there's the one about the guy and, uh, other guy. Oh, you must mean two gentlemen of Verona. Well done, Louis. Even though I didn't know the answer, I didn't feel silly. Miss Robertson had a way of making me feel special. I imagine she had the same effect on the other boys. I love daisies. 
Nice day for a ride, huh? Louis, Louis, wherefore art thou, Louis? Oh, this is a rough gig. Louis, 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 are you with us? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, just gotta tie my shoe. You weenie! Let Grunwald bring her flowers and Scott formaldehyde jars. I was gonna learn Shakespeare and be Miss Robertson's star. Laugh, 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 try, laugh. Can hot a pop face. Jeez, if you men were in the trenches, we'd have never finished that bridge over the river Kwai. How about a break, man? This bricks are heavy. Sorry, guys. Flanagan was all out of styrofoam bricks. Hey, Anderson, what are you doing? Burying a bone? <laughs> Very funny, Jensen. But that's exactly what'll be left to you when the big one hits. <laughs> Meanwhile, we'll be sitting pretty in our temperature-controlled, radiation-proof, airtight bomb shelter. <laughs> oil! I struck oil! I'm red! <laughs> <laughs> right might be a more appropriate description, Anderson. After Dad's brief career as an oil tycoon, the busted sewer pipe forced him to venture into plumbing. And since any trip to the hardware store was considered part of my formal education, I was recruited. Hey, Andy! How's your bomb shelter coming along? I drafted some of the neighbors. We'll have it finished in no time. I take a gander at my baby. Walnut paneling, track lighting, sauna. I'm thinking of moving in. Hey, Mr. Flanagan, got any Shakespeare around here? Shakespeare? You're not into that, too. My oldest has them teaching that nonsense down at the Cedar Knoll Military Academy. But I thought he was a military man. He is. He runs the joint. So what's with the Shakespeare? Well, that's what I keep asking him. Those kids should be learning something useful, like caulking, riveting, or grommeting. Oh, yeah. Grommeting. There's a skill you can apply every day. What a piece of work as man. How noble in. Speaking of work, are you gonna help the old man with the shelter later? Tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow. Not tomorrow, today. <clears throat> Thy enemy's wrath shall wait, my father, for I must tend to issues present. I had an easier time understanding the Germans in Salerno. Who's teaching him this garbage anyway? Why, the fair maiden, Miss Robertson. For crying out loud, she ought to be teaching him the four R's. Reading, writing, arithmetic, and reconnaissance. I believe it's the three R's, Andy. What? She took away one of the R's? Questions, anyone? Why didn't Shakespeare give anyone a normal name like Bob or Phil or Ted or Cindy? Splendid question, Louis. Well, I believe... Romeo and Juliet is a more romantic title than Bob and Juliet. I'm glad to see you're taking such an interest in your reading. This Shakespeare stuff isn't so hard. How's this? Something's rotten in the state of Denmark. And I think it's... <laughs> Thank you for that interesting interpretation. Can anyone help Mr. Glenn out? Something's rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Very impressive, Louis. Oh. For your exceptional knowledge of Shakespeare, I crown you King Louis Lear. <laughs> Perfect fit. Things couldn't have been any better until... Come on, troops. Move it, move Is it, move this it. really necessary, Andy? Move what? Where? 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 This is an air raid, Private. Move your tail to the shelter. Double time. Pitiful, just pitiful. Officially, we're all goners. Good. Maybe now we can all rest in peace. All right, everybody, spread hey, out. Come on now. Come on, give me some elbow room. You may close your ears. Move out of the way. Move it, Papa Lou. I thought this shelter was supposed to protect us from the enemy. Hey, I sweated like a pig building this place. And what? What, I can't even get a seat? There's no room for my in-laws. This isn't a hotel, Grunewald. It's a bomb shelter. Well, I'm not telling my mother-in-law to leave. Talk about World War III. Hey, what about my family? All right, all right already. Hold it down. 
friends, Romans, countrymen. Lend him your ears. Lend a what? What is he talking about? What the kid's trying to say is that we need a system. You know, families with the last names A through M have the shelter Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And M through Z the other days. Ooh, good idea, Louie. <laughs> Smart kid you got there, Andy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a real gem. Cookies, anyone? <gasps> oh, yeah, cookies. That's a great idea. Exactly how we did it in Normandy. Come, Father. Yawn breakfast awaits. Well, you sure are chipper this morning. Huh. I'm a morning person now. Really? I'll be sure to let the enemy know so they can bomb us anytime after dawn. Uh. Hey, Dan, where are all your helpers? After last night's little milk and cookie party, we decided it's every man for himself. So much for strength and numbers. Well, you and I make two, and that's all the numbers I need. Sorry, Dad, I'm busy. I gotta finish my oatmeal. And after that, I gotta brush up on my Shakespeare. Does Shakespeare keep a roof over your head and food on the table? Does Shakespeare pay your allowance? But, Dad, I'm in the middle of King Henry the Fourth. Well, around here, I'm the king. And King Andy the First says he needs help. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. And that means? It means go easy on your kids or they'll take over your kingdom. That's mutiny. Who's teaching you this track? Aura! I'm back! Wow, this is a surprise, huh? I haven't seen you in, what, two whole hours? I didn't do it, I swear! You know the routine. I'm telling you, she's teaching a mutiny. I hardly think Shakespeare. It's chaos. A man can't run a family unit like that. Mr. Anderson, a family is a group of people living together to offer one another love, support, and understanding. Not an elite tactical squadron. Well, I say she's filling his head with all sorts of ideas. And it's your job to get rid of her. <gasps> Excuse me, nature calls. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Let me start by saying how much I enjoy having Louis in my class. So you can brainwash him with all that Shakespeare propaganda? Shakespeare's plays are hardly... Don't get me wrong. I'm for higher learning as much as the next guy. But not when it interferes with national security. National security? He's got no respect for who's boss, and it ain't going over too good with me. Ain't is not a word, Mr. Anderson. What do you know, anyway? You're a principal, not a teacher. <laughs> you sound exactly like my father. You must be a military man. Fighting 5th Regiment, and proud of it. Then I was an army brat myself. Father was a full bird colonel. Well, I'll bet my Purple Heart, four citations, and three traffic violations that he doesn't go for this Shakespeare stuff either. On the contrary, Mr. A. He's a big fan. Especially Richard III and Henry V, Macbeth. Anything with a sword and a battlefield or two. Shakespeare wrote about war? Huh. Was he a marine or something? Not exactly, but you'd have a hard time finding an author who wrote about war as vividly as William Shakespeare. You know, a horse, a horse. My kingdom for a horse. Horse? Why didn't he just use a tank? They didn't have tanks in those days. Just bows, arrows, and the occasional cannon. You call that warfare? Let me tell you about the time I single-handedly tracked down 80 regiments of Germans. Hey! Over here! Hey! Louis' dad is a Benedict Arnold! Uh, you're okay, army brat. Oh, you're the scream. <laughs> Any chance of getting you to replace Holler in here? Excuse me? I know. These crumpets keep coming up on me, too. Uh. Excuse me. So what about it? How about giving Miss Robertson a full-time job? I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson, but we just can't afford it. Hollering here is just a little, uh, well, how would the bard put this? Oh, yeah. Cheap! I never... But I know someone who might be able to use you full-time. Make some real dough, huh? That would be smashing. My pal's son runs the Cedar Knoll Military Academy. Would that interest you? Would it? I love men in uniform. Let me see what I can do. 
Here's to you, Mr. Anderson. Now, here's to you, Miss Robertson. Please. Well, it's nice to see you, too. What are you doing here? Good news. I passed my stone. Where's Miss Robertson? She's moved on. Now, let's open our math books and begin. Yeah, Louie, way to go. What were you thinking? Jeez, what did I do? Monkey bars, 3.30, and don't be late. No! I'll set my watch. It's Noogie time! Leave him alone! Why should I? King Noogie here got Miss Robertson fired! I did not! Why would Louie do a thing like that? He worshipped her! Hey, I may have hung on every word she said, but I did not worship her. Well, I heard his dad tell Mrs. Halloran he wanted her executed! He did not! Executed? Well, fired! I was standing right outside her office. I heard the whole thing. That's <laughs> enough, Glen Glen. Ah, escaping the jaws of death. Miss Robertson, you came back. Well, just to get my belongings. So you are leaving. Oh, I don't want to. But they've offered me a full-time job at the military academy. Great. That's where I'm going when I get out of this place. Of course, you'll be 21 by then. Where's my little Romeo? Musclehead here chased him off. What's the matter, Louie? Dad got Miss Robertson fired. He what? Hey, Spart, how was school today? What's the matter? The cat got your tongue? That too, brute. Hey, what do you call me names for? What do you call me? You got my favorite teacher fired. Your father did no such thing, did you? I like to think of it as guiding her career. I knew it. You ruined my life! Who's gonna teach me Shakespeare now? Wow, that kid really loves his Shakespeare. It's not Shakespeare he loves. You know, Louie, everyone gets a crush on a teacher at least once in their lives. I don't have a crush on her. It's hard when someone you like so much has to go away, isn't it? Why couldn't Mr. Lambert be the one who got fired? I can't be Romeo if he's Juliet. I remember when my favorite art teacher left. I thought I would never enjoy life drawing again. But after a short time, I noticed my drawings became richer and more complicated. And this somehow relates to me? The truth is, I remembered what he taught me long after he was gone. And Mom, the point is? Well, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Shakespeare became your favorite author. Even without Miss Robertson? Because of Miss Robertson. Hello, Miss Day. How you doing? Hey, how you doing there, Army Brad? How's your shelter coming along? You'd love my dad. Miss Robertson, I'm sorry my dad got you fired. Your dad gave me the old heave ho. Blimey, not at all. He didn't? No. He got me hired at the academy, full time and everything. But I thought. Oh, no, Louis. Mr. Lambert was coming back as soon as he got well anyway. Your dad has been a great help to me. My dad? I hope you're gonna keep reading Shakespeare. No, I don't know. Sometimes he's a little hard to understand. I'll <laughs> tell you what. Anytime you get stuck, you just come round the academy and we'll figure it out together. How's that? You mean it? Absolutely. Toss me in the Thames if I don't. <laughs> Here. To my favorite king. Louis the First. Whoa! Thanks, Miss Robertson. You're welcome, Louis. And thanks again to you, Mr. A. So long, Brad. Parting is such sweet sorrow. That I shall say goodnight till it be morrow. <laughs> Not bad, Mr. A. Ta ta for now. You've been reading Shakespeare. Sure, I thought any fellow who wrote a book about war was worth taking a peek at. Sorry, Dad. I should have known you wouldn't have done anything to hurt Miss Robertson. She's a real peach. Makes pretty weak coffee, though. So, you ready to help the old man with the shelter? Well, Dad, I was kind of thinking. We can go down to the donut shop after. There's a wise father who knows his own child. You got that right, kid. 
Dad and I finished the bomb shelter that afternoon. There's nothing like a good incentive. Thankfully, we never had to use it. In fact, two weeks later, we turned it into a pool. Andy, my pool's clean. When thou diggest in thine own backyard, yon hole is always best suited for a swimming pool. And that's not Shakespeare, that's Louis Anderson. Knock off the horse, please! We're crying out loud. Aura, you're not listening to me. Time to hit the shine. Trying to do burn me? Hey, that feels pretty good. Uh. All right. Let me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now. That time again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride. When I was eight years old, it seemed like my whole life was devoted to one thing, acquiring candy. For a candy mogul like myself, the biggest day of the year was not Christmas. Here you go. Louis? Or even my birthday. Oh. It was Halloween. That's right. The whole candy fiscal year revolved around October 31st. Which is why every year, a month before Halloween, Mom issued a moratorium on the sweet stuff. No candy until the 31st. Every year, I barely made it to Halloween. Oh, you're no fun, Mom. I know. Clean up, I'll... And then one year, I didn't. Yeah. Oh dear, the onions. Louie, go grab me two onions. Louie, get that. Get that. What am I, a personal slime or something? What? Wow. It's a gold mine. Hmm. Can I help you find something? Uh, no. Yeah, just browsing. Checking out your display. Uh, looks really uh, spiffy. Keep up the good work. Gotta go. Uh, 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 uh. Careful, Louie. There's eggs in there. Let's go. What are you so jumpy about? Well, uh, it's grocery day. You know how excited I get? Well, let's go. The farther we got from the supermarket, the more I relaxed. By the time we got home, I'd practically forgotten all about the stolen piece of candy in my pocket. Until... I'm on the block, Mom. Drop me off at Grunewald's. No, that'll look suspicious. Just slow the car down, I'll roll out. Louie, what's gotten into you? The cops, they're after me. No, they're not. It's just the neighborhood watch meeting. Your father's hosting it tonight. And why would the police be after you anyway? Hmm, no reason. Oh, oh, and, and, and what are you going to do about the hooligans who are stealing our street signs? Yeah, what about the street signs? Who wants some action? Like I said, the best thing you can do is stay alert. Make sure your porch lights are on. Keep your eyes open. That's not good enough. Those lights don't solve crime. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what are we going to do about it, huh? Y'all know me, Andy Anderson. Officer Perkins, I'm going to get to the point. I'm not going to waste your time with a lot of ridiculous questions. I appreciate that. First of all, is it true that in Turkey... Common street thieves are punished by having their hands cut off. I couldn't really say. And secondly, how do we get some of those Turkish laws over here? Yeah, that's right. What's going on? Special assembly. All right, students. Listen up. Cedar Knoll Elementary is not just a place where you learn three R's. Here you learn about life. And with that in mind, it is my great honor to introduce Police Chief Perkins and three very special guests. Now pay attention. Hello, kids. Ms. Halloran asked me to come down here and talk about crime and punishment. I figured I'd need some help, so introduce yourselves, boys. Hey, Louie, isn't that your brother, Sid? 
Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. You know he made parole last month. My name's Bobby. I'm doing seven to ten years for borrowing. <clears throat> I mean, stealing cars. Tell him how you got started, Bobby. I stole a piece of candy when I was ten years old, and it was all downhill from there. It started with a single piece of candy. But soon I was cracking gumball machines and smuggling licorice and I was planning an all-out assault on the chocolate plant and... <laughs> Are you okay, Louie? My name is Meat, and I'm here to tell you that a life of crime is no life at all. It all began when I saw a jawbreaker at a drugstore, and I had to have it. Ten years later, I was still stealing candy, and look where it got me. Candy is not just bad for your teeth. Are there any questions? Go ahead. Ask him. You, the thin kid with the hair. Hey. You got a question? Yeah, my question's for Meat. Is Meat a first name or a last name? It's a family name. So, your first name would be... Red. <laughs> what? That wasn't a joke? Maybe it was a joke to everyone else, but I wasn't laughing. When I looked at those three prisoners, I saw my future. All night long, I heard the crinkling, crinkling, crinkling of the candy. I had a choice. Either never sleep again in my life, or get rid of the candy. Goodbye. Forever! Free at last, free at last. I felt a great weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I would have skipped all the way home if I didn't look so stupid doing it. What's that, Dad? You dressing for Halloween early? <laughs> Wrong again, my little citizen. The Neighborhood Watch Committee voted me their fearless leader, and I intend to look the part. Great. There go the property values. Watch it. Snide comments like that won't be tolerated on my feet. And was that you skipping outside? Even my dad's raging psychosis couldn't dampen my mood. The candy was gone, I was candy free. Psst, Louie, I got you a gift. What is it? I know how hard Octobers are for you. With mom's no candy rule, so... When I found this... <gasps> I figured it was time to do something for Louie. Cause you always... Hey! Being such a good brother. Where'd you get that candy? I told you, Louie, I... Who put you up to this? No one! You want me to go to prison, is that it? You're trying to put me away, lock me up, send me up the river, into the clink, the slammer, the big house, the hole! Well, forget it! I won't play the sap for you! I won't play the sap for anyone! That wasn't an ordinary piece of candy. No, it was a message. A message from the man upstairs. I knew what I had to do. I had to bring that sucker back. Way to price check on aisle seven. Aisle seven. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, may I help you with something? No, I was just um, doing some um, research, you know, uh, studying the um, marketing of candy and uh, that kind of thing. Uh-huh. Tell me something, Mr. Anderson. If I searched your pockets right now, what would I find? A lawsuit. Do you know what an audit is, Louis? Mmm. Oh, something French. Flaky crust on the outside, cream in the middle. Hmm? Huh? Tomorrow morning, I'm having the whole store audited. That means I'm going to count up all the money in the cash registers and all the merchandise and make sure everything's been paid for. How uh, accurate is this audit? Very. If a single piece of candy left this store unpaid for, I'll know it. You will? And I'll know whose parents to call. Wow, that is an accurate audit. <laughs> Guess I'll be getting home. It was time to face the facts. My life, Louis Anderson, marginal student, 
was over. I was now a common criminal. I wondered what kind of food they'd serve in the prison cafeteria. And I wondered if they'd give you seconds. Maybe if you asked real nice. Hold it right there, pal. You're under arrest. Don't send me to the big house. I didn't mean to do it. Louie, what's the matter with you? I was just kidding. Very funny. Why are you dressed like the fuzz anyway? Because it's Halloween, duh. Where's your costume? Leave me alone. Halloween. If I never saw another Halloween again, it would be too soon. I had ten hours to find a way to stay off the chain gang. Louie! I'm very disappointed in you. What? He called already? Who called? I still have ten hours. Louie, you're babbling. I'm talking about the candy. The candy I found in your jacket pocket. Oh, right. So no one called you? No, but you know how I feel about candy before Halloween. We had a deal. You're absolutely right, Mom. Just give me that piece of candy. I'll get rid of it. Too late. I put it in with the rest of the trick-or-treat candy. You did what? Hey, I never knew there was this many kids in the neighborhood. Trick-or-treat! Uh, I wish I had a trick. Uh, it probably took you hours to come up with that costume, huh, Whitey? No! It's Halloween. You're not going out without a costume. Rules are rules. <laughs> oh, he's getting away. Hey, you, ghost, come here. Yeah, we gotta go over here. Come here, go, <laughs> Man, wait a minute. Red shoes? He had red shoes. Red shoes? Ha, ah, get away. Show me your shoes. What you get away from my son, you bad dog. Bad dog, go, go. <laughs> hey, you, ghost, come here. Prisoners from county jail just escaped Trick from a treat. transport bus. They were last seen at anybody? Cedar No. Andy! Sorry, honey, gotta go. There's trouble out there. And you know me, trouble's my middle name. No, it's not. It's Mortimer. Shh. That's our little secret. Thank you very much, Dr. Miller. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much Dr. Dr. Miller. Miller. I told you, you never go trick-or-treating at the dentist's house. Actually, I needed a new toothbrush. Don't move. That's the biggest dog I've ever seen. And I bet you he's a rabbit. That's no dog. That's Louie. I guess there's a resemblance. But you really want to take that chance? Maybe I should get some pepper spray. And that's the whole sad story. Don't worry about it, Louie. We'll come visit you in the big house. Yeah, it won't be all bad. You get those cool pajamas. You know, with the stripes. Hey, Louie, were they Cashman high tops? What? The sneakers. The red high tops the ghost was wearing. Yeah, I think so. Why? Well, your ghost left a trail. All right! Why are you squishing my leg? Anderson, really, shouldn't we simply let the police do their job? I mean, the officer said that we should... I know, I heard the guy. We should leave our porch lights on and keep our eyes out. Sorry, Jensen, that's not gonna cut it, my posse. Excuse me, uh, who put you in charge? My car, my roll. Now, where the heck is John Street? Hold it right there, Casper Weinberger. Huh? I think I'll be taking that candy now. But, uh, but... A vampire, I'm so scared.
Bert. Hey, Dracula, count this. Now give me your candy. Drop that candy, Glen Glen. Well, if it isn't Night Loogie, dog of the looginess. Give me the candy. Who's gonna make me? We are. <laughs> Who else? Uh, the escaped convict behind you? Come on. How dumb do you think I am? Is that a trick question? I'm not falling for that escaped convict gag again. What do you think I am, a complete pumpkin head? Yep. Huh? Mommy! I want my mommy! <laughs> Here you go, kid. You can have mine. Wow. Thanks a lot. Gentlemen, lady, evening. Wait a second. Mr. Meat, sir? The candy. Can I see the candy? Sorry, kid. Find this keepers. I, I, I just need one piece. Wish I could help, but I'm a lost cause. Once a candy thief, always a candy thief. Please. Your paw is touching me. Just one piece. One piece, but you can't look. What? Go to the rule, my friend. Guy with the gold makes the rules. One piece. No looking. There must have been 500 pieces of candy in that bag, mm. but it didn't matter. A higher power was guiding my hand that night. Got it! All right! There you go, kid. It's all yours. My advice, throw it away. Because Candy, she's a cruel mistress. You said it, brother. Wow. What now, Louie? Now we return it. Return it? One, two, three, go! Uh, Louie, uh, isn't this kind of illegal? No. What's illegal about it? I don't know. Maybe the breaking and entering part? No, it's only illegal if you're breaking in to steal something. Since we're breaking in to return something, it's perfectly legal. Uh, who knew? Hey, guys. What are you doing? The front door's open. Mm. Figures. This is Jones Street. <sighs> Wrong again, Jensen. Jones Street is this way. You tell him, Andy. Here are the signs. This is madness. Madness. We'll never see our families again. We're going to have to start our own colony right here. <gasps> Fellas, that's our call to duty. Follow that siren. In the car. In the car. I'm surrounded by incompetence. Why do you suppose the door was open? Maybe they left it open to air out the food. Right. The same way you open your mouth to air out your brain. Exactly. Oh, almost there. Um, Louie, I think I figured out why the front doors were open. I don't care. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Airing out the food. Him. <laughs> Going somewhere? I told you not to follow me. Any ideas? Yeah. Run! Gotcha. Where do you think you're going? Let go of me! All right. Drop the candy. Uh-oh. The cheek is up. Hey. What about us? Oh, drop the kids. Ow. Come out with your hands up. Man, I knew that part was coming. Now tell me, were you scared? Not at all. Hmm, maybe a little. You kidding? I'm still scared. Louie, I want to thank you for saving my store. It was nothing. I owe you an apology. I never should have accused you of stealing. Actually... No, you're right. It should be a written apology. I'll tell you what. As soon as I'm done with that candy audit, I'll put it all down in writing. Wait a minute. You're not listening to me. What I'm trying to tell you is... Don't worry. We're here now. Nothing to fear. <laughs> Match up another victory there for the neighborhood watch. <laughs> should incorporate, really. You were right. This piece of candy? How you feeling there, Lily? <laughs> What candy? What are you talking about? I don't have time for this nonsense. Anderson, your son's babbling. I think he's in shock. Take care of the boy. Uh... Can I ask you a few questions? How does it feel to be a hero? No, it's true. I'm not a hero at all. 
Oh, you're just being modest. No, I'm not. I'm telling you the truth. The only reason I was in the market is because I was trying to return the piece of candy that I stole. This is reporter Kimberly Rains with local hero Louis Anderson. Back to you. My son, the hero. <laughs> Wow, Louie, you're a hero. Quit calling me that. Didn't you hear a word I said? Huh? What's that, hero? Never mind. <laughs> Louie, I hope you learned your lesson. You heard me apologize? You're the only one. I tried to tell the truth, but no one would listen. Well, the important thing is that you tried. I'm sorry I took the candy. I know, and that's what makes you a hero. You think so? I know so. Good night, Mom. Oh, Louie, one more thing. The supermarket manager stopped by with a reward for you. I put it in your room. A reward? Good night. Jeez. I think I'll sleep out here tonight. Get away from me. Take a candy. Oh, man. What smell? Uh, it smells like a formaldehyde. Tension, is that you? Hold on the window, quick! Oh, sure. Claim the pathologist. All right. Let me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now. It's bedtime again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride. For years, teachers have been trying to convince me that the United States looked like the maps they showed us in class. They couldn't fool me, though. I knew better. I knew that Cedar Knoll was the center of the universe. <laughs> After all, I'd been born there. I'd always lived there, and as far as I knew, the rest of the world rotated around Cedar Knoll. My family's going to Snipperland for summer vacation this year. Boy, am I jealous. I hear it's the last year for Paws on Parade. Ooh, thrilling. And they got this new ride there, the Growling Canine Coaster. That sounds so fun, doesn't it, Louie? I guess so. Gotta go. See ya. What about you, Louie? Where's Colonel Anderson taking your family this year? I'll tell you where he's taking us. He is... He, he's taking us to Snifferland. That's right. This summer, that's where we're going, Snifferland. That's where. So, baby Lucy Lou's going to Snifferland this year, huh? So? You man enough to go on the Growling Canine Coaster? You bet I am. I've got my own Growling Canine Coaster right here. Oh, All aboard. <laughs> hey, oh, slow down. Catch the in ten seconds. Sorry, we, we don't have tickets. See ya. Yeah, see you, Louie. Since there's no line, I'll let you go again for free. You're all hard. All aboard. <laughs> oh, another day at the grind. Can we go to oh, Stephen and Dad? Please, can we go and the last year of Paws on Parade? Couldn't we talk about this later? Like after you two finish college. Hello, dear. All right, I can't get them off me. Get me my crowbar. I want to go to Sniverland, Dad. Where's that? Fresno, California. What are you, nuts? That's in California. It's on the other side of the world. For summer vacation. Are you forgetting something, Louie? We're going to the Civil War reenactment camp for the summer. Oh, again? General Grant, I got another rebel. We do that every year. I want to go to Snipperland. Me too. Tell you what, boys, I'll make you a deal. This year, you can both fight for the North, and I'll fight for the South. Of course, don't expect the same outcome. General Lee, I got another Yankee. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, what do you say, kids? Oh, Dad, come on. Come on, Dad. Andy, maybe a change would be good. What are you talking about? Change is never good. And it's usually more expensive. It'd be good for the boys to see California. And I could use the trip to add to my salt and pepper shaker collection. Ah, oh, yeah, just what we need. 
will be the envy of all of our neighbors when the great salt and pepper famine hits Wisconsin. Show your father the coupon, Louie. If we go to Sniverland before July 4th, this coupon gives our whole family 50% off admission. I'm sorry, Louie. But the answer is definitely no. Absolutely not. No way. Uh-uh. I don't think so. So much stuff. What do you think we're moving? Oh. What do you do? Hey, pal, any chance of helping a veteran out? Did you bring the camera? Of course, dear. Because I want to capture every moment at Snifferland. Hey, you two shutterbugs ready? California is not going to come to us. I can't wait to ride in an airplane. Me too. We've never been on a plane. I hear they give you free peanuts. Don't forget to dust the salt and pepper shakers twice a week. Bye bye now. I won't forget. Okay, have fun, everybody. Yes, they're gone. I've got records. I've got the snacks. I'll call the boy. <laughs> Next train. Dad, we're taking a train. But I wanted to fly in an airplane. The train is better than an airplane. We'll get to see much more of the country this way. Not to mention it's half the cost. Besides, we're traveling in the plush car. You hear that, boys? The plush car. Oh, oh look! There's the Mississippi River. Whoopee. Man, that is the biggest river I've ever seen. Don't you want to take a picture of the Mississippi River, Louie? Oh, I hope I was using the proper shutter speed. Comfy, boys? Uh, yeah, I spared no expense. When it comes to my family, only the best. Excuse me, Stuart. Where are the plush beds? The plush car is our cheapest fare, sir. It doesn't come with beds. Oh, we don't need beds, Louie. These seats will be just fine. See? You practically melt right into them. Hmm. Train stopped. There's something wrong with the engine. And there's something wrong with my neck. Medic! Medic! They don't know when they're going to be able to fix the train, Dad. We're running out of time. Pause on parade stops in three days. And? And that's when our coupon expires. I can't move my head, and you're worried about a coupon. If we don't get there in three days, it'll cost you double. Get our bags. We're getting off this train. Are you sure this is such a good idea, Andy? Of course it is. We'll walk to the next town. It's probably only a couple of miles away. I feel sorry for those fools who stayed on that train. Who knows how many days they'll be stuck on that old thing. <laughs> right on, Dad. Hey, Dad, how long did you say the average human could survive without water? I'll have you know. Strangers? Trouble? Of course not. We're just getting a little exercise. Hang on, everyone. Yes, sir. Sky off the base. Sky off the base. <laughs> Got everything under control. So, where are you heading? California. Well, I'll take you as far as I can. Hey, something wrong with your neck? What gave it away? The awkward position of my head or the look of excruciating pain in my eye? What's that down there? There's the very first shopping center in the state. It's called a mall. What's that? It's a big building with all kinds of different shops in it. Do they sell salt and pepper shakers there? Are you kidding me? They got a store in there. That's all they sell. You think maybe we could make a little detour? The man's not landing the plane just so you can buy a few trinkets, honey. Don't be silly. I'll be back in a jiffy. How much salt can one family eat? Man, we're running out of time. We've got to get to Snifferland. Aren't these priceless? Yeah, it's priceless. I wish they were weightless. Did you remember to get my muscle ointment, honey? I'm sorry, dear. I just didn't have the time. Ah, 
gift again. Literally. Billy, why don't you take a picture at the mall? I smell a cancer. A mall, what a dumb idea. Take my word, kids. That'll never work. Hey, Mr. Mill, can you get this thing to move any faster? Stop holding this baby back. Give her some juice. There's too much weight. Don't you know anything about flying? I served my country 5,000 feet up in the air. I earned my wings mm. making this world safe for democracy. That's what I know about flying. I don't like to brag. <laughs> but MacArthur once said if it wasn't for my aeronautical expertise, the war would have gone on an extra year or two. Mind if I give it a go? Sure, if you think you can get it to go any faster, then be my guest. Hey, what are you doing? You can't. <laughs> oh, how about a stall? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot better. Look out for the... Oh, 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 oh. I'll show you a little trick I learned from a couple of flyboys over the skies of oh, East wait, Africa. Oh, That's great, Dad, if you could smell. You belong in an asylum, you know that? What's the matter, Mel? Afraid of a little competition? Louie, how'd you like to learn how to forage for food? Louie, look like a muskrat. I think I see a bus station. See any donut shops? I'll sneak down there and see if they're friends or foe. Good idea, Dad. Who knows what evil lurks in the heart of Colorado? You got that right. Follow me and stay low to the ground. I'll try. I'm so excited. A genuine Rocky Mountain salt and pepper set. You can't find anything like that in Wisconsin. Mom, must have something to do with the Rocky Mountains not being in Wisconsin. Backpack is getting heavy. I know, Louie. You're so strong. Could this bus go any slower? Louie, we're gonna miss Paws on Parade. I'll see what I can do. Now you be polite, dear. Any way we can pick up the pace here, miss? I'm going as fast as I can, sir. This is my first time driving on mountain roads. Well, there's your problem, dear. I'm your man. You are? You bet there, dear. Who do you think led the 15th Armored Division over the Swiss Alps? You? You're darn right it was me. Why don't you let me relieve you there, soldier? It'll help you to watch a professional do it, huh? <laughs> well, okay. You're sure you're okay to drive with your neck like that? You kidding? It helps me see around the corner. Over, uh, over here. <laughs> What's with the commotion? Look out! No problem, all. I've got everything under control. Dad, <laughs> rock slide. Feel used. Ah, uh, must want to give me the key to the city for saving everyone. Reckless driving? Since when is saving a busload of Americans considered reckless driving? It's a mad world, Dad. Well, the next bus doesn't leave till next week. Next week? Yeah, the river washed out the road. It's just impassable. Dad, we'll never make it in time to see Pawns on Parade. Did you say river? Have fun, and be careful! Reminds me of the raid I led on the Kuala Island. All we had were five men, two rafts, and one Swiss Army knife. Whoa, check it out! The Grand Canyon! Isn't this beautiful? Louie, don't you want to take a picture? Uh-huh. Attention, troops! Choppy waters at 12 o'clock. What time is it now? <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
soldiers, let's make camp for the night. We'll go to the top tomorrow morning. How are we supposed to get up there? The same way everyone else does. <laughs> I don't know, Tex. Come on! You think I can't get up the hill without you? Is that what you think? Reach into the top. I heard that. Be careful, boys. There you go. This stubborn donkey won't take any orders. Come on, Jasper. Get inside. Oh, good boy. Oh. <laughs> Mark my words, donkey. We will meet again. Dad, what are we gonna do now? Tomorrow's the last day of pawns on parade. Not to mention the last day of the coupon. Don't worry, I've got everything under control. You always say that. People, I think I just found our way to Fresno. <laughs> Ooh. Nice balloon you got there. Thanks. How much you rent it for 24 hours? Do you know anything about flying a hot air balloon? You know who the first person was to fly a balloon across the Atlantic? You flew across the Atlantic in a balloon? That's right. Hit England, just kept going, passed right over the Berlin Wall. Rescued a few prisoners and then headed straight back. Now, uh, how much to rent this balloon? For an American hero like you, no charge, sir. Well, that's mighty patriotic of you. Dad, you don't know anything about flying a balloon. How hard can it be? I mean, it's not like anyone's trying to shoot us down. Whoa! Yeah, how hard can it be? Cool. Oh, my, how pretty. Wow, look at that. Whoa. Dad, do something. We're going to crash. Heavy. We've got too much weight in the balloon. We need to throw something overboard. Louie? Yeah, Dad? How about how much you weigh, Louie? Don't even think about it. All right, let's throw the luggage overboard. Dad, it's not enough. Oh, here, how about this? Not your collection. Yeah, Mom. Hey, but we need to throw something overboard quick. Well, can't you find something else? I did, your brother didn't go far. Just give me a moment. Today! Hey, Dad, I got an idea. Oh, Ooh, gotcha. Oh, cool. Nice thinking, kid. Like they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Oh, Louie, thanks for saving my salt and pepper shakers. Well, we didn't want to risk our food supply. Get us there on time. Thanks, Dad. You're the greatest dad ever! You got that right. You better get that coupon ready, Lai. Sniffleland, here we go. All right, we're the first ones here. Uh-oh. Hey, Dad, why isn't anyone here? What's with the rides? Orlando, Florida. How far away is that, Dad? By plane or balloon? I'm afraid it's on the other side of the country, Louie. Oh, perfect. Uh, Louie, I thought you said Snifferland was in Fresno. But it says so right here, Dad. This comic book is over two years old. Mm. <laughs> so what are we supposed to do now? Oh, I have an idea. Don't even think about it, Aura. <laughs> Are you listening to me, Aura? Stop right there! About face, Aura! Dad broke down and bought his plane tickets back home. He figured we'd save money in the long run. What have they got in Orlando? Nothing but swampland. Mark my words, nobody's ever gonna go there. Passenger seated on the left-hand side of the aircraft, you can get a good view of the Grand Canyon. Where is it? Yeah, great view. I went on the Growling Canine Coaster 12 times. It was really great. Oh, it's too bad you didn't make it to Snifferland, Louie. We made it a couple of months late. Oh, you missed the final pause on Parade. I know, I missed it all. And all I have to show from my vacation are these lame pictures. 
What are they pictures of? Yeah, what are they? Let me see them. You took these? Wow, where'd you take this one from? I took that in the hot air balloon. You got to ride in a balloon? Yeah, that was after my dad did some sky riding in the plane we were flying in. Neat. Yeah, and after our bus almost fell over a cliff. Oh, no way! And then, we went whitewater rafting through the Grand Canyon, and a snake almost ate me. You're lying. No, he's not. Look at this. That's amazing. Louie, you had the coolest vacation ever. You think so? Yeah. What else did you do, Louie? Tell us more. Yeah, well, we rode jackasses from the bottom of the Grand Canyon to the... I learned a couple of things from that vacation. First, I learned that sometimes the best trips are the ones you don't plan. And second, I learned there was a great big world outside of Wisconsin. And you know something? I was the only kid in town who knew where the Colorado River was. Not to mention having survived it in a raft. You are so lucky. There's salt pepper shakers in my trophy case. My trophy case. Where are all my trophies? Ah, I had my medals in there. There's nothing sacred anymore. All right. All right. Let me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now. It's that time again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride. things we had to learn in school, I'd have to say my best subject was lunch, but my worst was definitely science. Mr. Lambert had a scintillating way of making astronomy as fascinating as watching paint dry. Down the sun, a star, Very funny, Goon. Intelligent life on other planets. How about the chance of intelligent life teaching this class? Mr. Grunwald, <laughs> since you and Mr. Anderson seem to be so enthusiastic about class participation. I have a little treat for you. One week? What kind of class project are we going to come up with in just one week? No pressure, goon. It just counts as half our grade. Think of it as a challenge. How about something like that? A spaceship? And what exactly are we supposed to use for parks? We'll improvise. How come we have to improvise in my garage? Your dad has more junk. Hey, this waffle iron will make a good rider. And this old telescope will make a cool ray gun. Careful. My dad used that in the war. Hey, how about these? Earth to Louie. Earth to Louie. Take me to your leader. I told you not to leave your toys around. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a mess. Ah! Avalanche! Hey, what's the big idea? Oh, Mr. A. Hey, Dad. Ah, it's you, Grunwald. What a surprise. What are you two up to? Homework. Since when is messing up my garage considered homework? We were just looking for some junk. Huh? With my field telescope? If it weren't for this telescope, you wouldn't be here today. In fact, the free world as we know it might not exist. Brussels, May 19th. Oh, look at the time. I'm late for dinner. See ya. Dinner already? My platoon is assigned to take out the Tujanet Bridge. I pulled out my trusty field telescope and scoped out the situation. We were outnumbered, and the enemy was closing in fast. Things were looking mighty grim for the fighting fifth. An enemy grunt lobbed a live grenade right at us. I wanted to run, but I knew it was the bottom of the night. The bases were loaded, and old glory needed a home run. I stepped up to the plate with my trusty field telescope, waiting for the pitch, and whack! A Borrowed my scope, hit a grand slam, and beat the St. Louis Browns to win the pennant. Is there a point to this story? The point is respect. Now clean up the mess before dinner. Let's see, let's go here. Add that. Ah, I'll never get this thing back together. Uh-huh, sure, dear. What do you got there, honey? An alien sighting. Speak
space aliens in my keister. A farmer falls asleep on his lawnmower, does a few donuts, snaps a photo of it, calls it a UFO landing site, and the next thing you know, he's a celebrity. Ah, <laughs> nonsense. It's not nonsense. Look, aliens abducted a 40-year-old housewife and sucked out her brain. Ah, uh, that one I can blame, honey. Oh, very funny. You think it's convincing enough? If we could just make it fly, we're a shoe in for an A. Hey, I have an idea. I borrowed these from Tommy. Does he mind? No. Why do you ask? <laughs> Louie, check this out. Prepare for the Martian invasion. All that's mortals. This is great, Goon. I'm telling you, we're going to ace this project. Louie! Oh, no. Oh, do me a favor and call Louie for dinner, would you? Uh, sure. I'd love to, Buttercup. It's not like I'm doing anything important here. Uh, oh, gotcha! Hurry, it's getting away! Louie! Dinner. Louie! Where is that kid? Why? Holy Toledo. Look, he's just staring at it. I wonder if he thinks it's real. No. He can tell it's just junk. We're gonna fail. There's only one way to find out. Greetings, Earthling. Ah, uh, please don't suck out my brain and vaporize me. <laughs> cool. He thinks it's real. Negative. We come in peace. Who are you? Where do you come from? Uh, I am Zarbor, leader of the Wingbats. We come from a tiny planet in a distant galaxy. Millions of light years away. Works great. Go get it out of there. You have been selected to be the ambassador for all Earthlings. And what? <laughs> we will return in one week. Spread the word across the globe and prepare for the arrival of the alien armada. Yes, sir. I mean, all great leader of the Wingbation people. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, I'd really appreciate you posing for a photo. You know. For the old family album. <laughs> Don't go away. I'll be right back in a flash. Come on. Now's our chance. Goodbye. Uh, see you next week. Uh, Don't worry. I won't let you down. <laughs> Aura! Aura! That was great. He thought it was real. This could be our first day. All right. You settle for a C minus? Maybe it was just a low-flying plane or something. Aura, uh, I'm telling you, it was a real, honest-to-goodness spaceship. It looked just like this one. Well, my pictures will be better. And by tomorrow, I'll have the proof to show the world. Of all the people on the planet, they chose me. <laughs> I have to get ready. Only have a week to prepare, you know. And I want to make a good impression. After all, I am the ambassador. <laughs> Green men didn't happen to fly out of a magic lamp, did they? <laughs> I'm telling you, I saw a spaceship. Why won't you guys believe me? Maybe it's just a total lack of proof. <laughs> <laughs> I've got proof. I'm picking the photos up at lunch. Then we'll see who's laughing. Party, har, har. And I think if we glue the straps from my mom's yellow sundress um, to the handle of my dad's golf bag... Um, Louie, that's nonsense. To make this fly again, we'd have to use your mom's red evening gown instead. Funny. Man, what I have here in my hands is about to change history, as we know. <laughs> yeah, right. Behold, the aliens! Oh, my, it's hideous! spotted an alien. Uh -oh. Look on the bright side. At least it was convincing. That's right. The truth is they really came here to melt our faces off and to take over the planet. But old Andy Ambassador Anderson here set him straight and made peace. And how exactly did you do that, Mr. Anderson? I'm sorry, but that's classified information. <laughs> uh, by the way, did I mention that I'm a war hero? Yes. Twice. Hey, buddy. 
has my favorite alien expert. Oh, I've known Andy for, uh, what, 20 years? It's my bud. That's Jensen, J-E-N-S-E-N. A lot of people didn't believe this whole spaceship thing, but I stood by him from the start. Don't forget, we have a fine array of souvenirs available in our gift store. Don't you think you're going a little overboard, dear? Relax, honey, it's Anderson time. Or how about a limited photo of yours, truly? Alien expert ambassador. Or how about one with an actual alien? Come on, work the crowd. Take me to your leader. We come in peace. All right, blue wire batteries. With any luck, we'll have the spaceship back together by tomorrow. Right after we take a little break. Oh, rain shot! Here you go, kids. Two space cone specials. Hmm. Not bad. Mint. Don't you think the tone's taking this alien thing a little too far? What do you mean? Look. I think it brings a certain panache to the community. We can't take it anymore. I'm going to tell my dad the truth. And with us now is noted alien expert and alien appointed ambassador to Earth, Mr. Andy Anderson. Oh, no. What now? Today's a very special day. The day the aliens are expected to return. Real bright idea having the aliens return. And so, as your ambassador, I'd just like to take this opportunity to invite each and every one of you to my Adobe tonight for the event of a lifetime. Well, like a disappointment of a lifetime. Mom, can I ask your advice? Sure, Louie. About what? Well, I have this friend who did something. And not even something that bad. But this other person misinterpreted it and blew the whole thing into orbit, so to speak. And now this friend is afraid to tell what they did. And what do you think they should do? Louie, life is a lot like making cookies. Hmm. You should have known. Let's say you're baking a dozen chocolate chip cookies. You lay out all your ingredients. Then you start mixing them all together. But... What if some Brussels sprouts accidentally spill into the bag? Brussels sprouts? For all we know, chocolate chip Brussels sprout cookies might even taste better than regular cookies. But do you tell people they're not eating regular chocolate chip cookies even though they might not ever find out? It all comes down to honesty and taking responsibility. Would you like a cookie? Uh, thanks for the advice, Mom. Clean it up, brush a little hair, brush there. <laughs> Well done. Isn't she a beaut? Yeah, Dad. Just think of it, Louie. When that spaceship lands here in our yard tomorrow night, we're gonna make history, my boy. <laughs> That's great, Dad. But I... Heck, I wouldn't be surprised if they offered me a seat in the U.N. <laughs> Directed a statue of me in the center of town. Even named a sandwich after me. I can see it now. The Andrew Sandwich. <laughs> That's being immortalized. Dad, I really... Oh, my gosh. Look at the time. I have to get ready. Oh. Greetings, great leader of the Wimbatians. Welcome to Earth. Earth. That sounds too impersonal. Greetings, great leader of the Wimbatians. Dad, do you have a minute? Oh, yeah, sure. I've got the leader of the Wimbatians arriving here at 2200. And I have the speech of a lifetime to give and haven't even started yet. Sure, I've got time. Shoot. I was wondering if we could talk. I know what's on your mind. I have for some time. You do? Yes, you're worrying about now that I'm famous, will I still be the same old lovable dad? <laughs> but don't worry, Lay. Fame and fortune won't change old Andy Anderson. Uh-uh. Well, actually... <laughs> you know what? Fame and fortune aren't even the best part of this whole thing, Lay. You know what is? That of all the people on the whole planet, those aliens chose me to be the ambassador for our people. For the first time since I was in the military, I feel like I have a special purpose again. Well, gotta go. The mothership awaits. Great. I am here in front of the home of Andy Anderson, where a historic event will take place. Aliens from another planet have announced that they will be landing here. Oh, what am I gonna do? 
I heard Mrs. Connick. Oh man, look at all these people. This doesn't look good. Get your view spots here. If you want to see the spaceship, you need a prime spot to view it from. Mike, what are you doing? Making a buck. What does it look like I'm doing? Renting out our lawn. You can't do that. It's wrong. You're right. I should cut you 30% of the profits. So, what time do you think we should launch our ship? Are you nuts? We can't do it again. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, there are a lot of people here who are counting on a flying saucer showing up tonight. Look, isn't that Mr. Lambert? Yeah. If everyone believes our ship is real, there's no way Lambert will deny us an A. An A, huh? Are you sure about this, Andy? Don't worry, darling. But if for some reason they don't show, I just don't want to see you be disappointed. If there's one thing I know about these aliens, honey, it's that they don't go back on their word. I would like to thank you all for coming out for Cedar News first. Alien Landing! <laughs> Let's give a warm applause to Mr. Ambassador himself, Andy Anderson. As a small token of our appreciation, we bestow upon you the key to the city. Thank you, everyone. This is a very proud day for me. It reminds me of another day. Okay, here we go. Where's the helium balloons? I got something better this time. Electric fans. Look, 30-foot extension cord. Ready for blast off? There's one little problem, genius. How are we supposed to launch this flying saucer with half the world out there? Uh, I thought you were covering that one. Sorry, everyone. False alarm. Glad you're paying attention. But I'm sure they'll be here. <laughs> Look, there it is. <laughs> Greetings, Earthlings. We come in peace. Greetings, great leader of Umbatians. Welcome back to the dairy capital of America. But where is of spaceships. Fleet of spaceships? Remember, that was your idea there, Mega Mouth. I know this is uncharacteristic of me, but I'm stumped. Uh, the other ship stopped for donuts and then took the long turn at Jupiter. But they should be here soon. Good one, Louie. Great. Now that our peoples have made peace, we offer to you a modest collection of some of our community's finest. A wedge of water. The cord! Quick, put it back in! Mm. Ah. Look out! It's an ambush! I am the man! Get the dash! <laughs> Quick, put it back in! Pay uh, no attention to the earthlings in the dual Kids. You know what this means, Louie? Court Marshal. You hear me? Court Marshal. I'm doomed. This could have finally put Cedar Newell on the map. May I suggest, Mr. Anderson, you read my latest self-help book, Alien Sighting or Alienation. <laughs> You. I didn't mean to. It's just our science project. I guess it got a little out of hand. A little out of hand? Louie, go to your room. Go to your room. Go to your room. Jesus. Let me come up with anything new. So, what do you think? A? A plus? What do you have to say to Mr. Anderson? Ow! I'm sorry, Mr. A. This wasn't a goof on you. If it was up to me, I wouldn't have done it in public. I, I would have done it behind your back. It'll never happen again. You bet it'll never happen again. Oh, okay, okay, I hear you. All right, stop. Ow. Say cheese. Huh? Our class project was, um... About space travel. But now it's about how to get your picture in the paper in one easy lesson. Yeah, lesson one. Make a fool out of yourself in front of the whole town. <laughs> Andy, I'm sorry. Sorry for
for one. The fact that I wasted a week of good TV watching time to build a landing pad? Or was it the fact that I was made a fool by my only son? Well, Louie's not your only son. He's my only son that embarrassed me in public. Well, that's not true. There was the time that Sid dressed up... Ah, don't remind me of that one. Oh, dear. Here, this is for you. You might want to let the glue dry before touching the sides. Are you still mad? Hey, don't worry about it. I got my 15 minutes of fame. Now it's back to being your average Joe Schmo again. You know where you went wrong? You should have used a battery pack, kid. It's lighter than the extension cord, and you could have got more height. Yeah, but then it would have made an even bigger crash. Nah. You couldn't have crashed bigger than you did, son. I'm real sorry, Dad. Hey, let's see what stars are out tonight. What do you say? Dad? Yeah, Louie? If aliens really did land, you would have made a great ambassador. Thanks, son, but if aliens really had landed, I think I would have just fainted. <laughs> My dad thought he was just an average Joe again. But it was that night I realized there was nothing average about him at all. I didn't get a chance to tell him what I was really thinking. But I think he knew. I can't believe I even believed in flying saucers. It's ridiculous, really. Yeah, it is pretty funny, Dad. Ah, <laughs> Larry. Uh, yeah, Dad? Slow my heart down and tell me that's just a clip. All right. Let me tell you about my family. Hey, here we go now. It's bedtime again. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride. I haven't been in show business my entire life. The fact is, my career didn't start until so, elementary school. No one has signed up. No one has signed up. Or up onto the roof to get the paper has been the best exercise program a veteran could ever have. <laughs> Why, that was simply dynamic. Have you ever thought about the theater? Uh, no. You could be the next Brando, Newman, Laurence Olivier. You think so? No, not without my direction, of course. Think you're ready to perform for a bigger audience? Bigger than the third grade? You in the spring play that I wrote. Actually, I adapted it. So, would you like to audition? Uh... Great, see you at three. I hear you're gonna try out for the play. You hear? Hey, I know, maybe you'll be the handsome prince. Then we'd have scenes together. Well, what play is it? I didn't even bother to ask. Sleeping Beauty. Oh, and who will you be? I'll give you one guess. I'm asleep in the second act. Break a leg, Louie. <coughs> Simple good luck would have been sufficient. Oh, I know the task set. Before me, I shall sail the seven seas, leap tall buildings in a single bound to seek out the princess, and with my kiss, bring her back to life. I hope you don't mind I improvise. Thank you, Melvin. That was very nice. <sighs> Who's next? Okay, Larry, whenever you're ready. Uh, Louie. Oh, I shall... I know the task set before me. I shall seek out the princess and with my kiss bring her back to life. Something like that. Uh, now, uh, try the line on page 15. My kiss shall awaken thee. Get up, Fairman. This is ridiculous. Gee. Thanks for the support. Glenn, Glenn, what are you doing here? This isn't a murder mystery. Step aside, Louis B. Mayer. I'm going to audition to be the handsome prince. I'm thrilled you're here, Glenn, Glenn. Please grab one of my scripts. I'm going right to the smooching scene, if that's all right. Splendid. My kiss shall awaken thee, fair maiden. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. I'm moved. You are all really... Great. Well, the audition is just underway. We must be considerate of others. Uh, we've been here two hours. Okay, Louie, you win. You're the handsome prince. I demand a recount! 
Oh, don't be discouraged, Glenn. You can be Louis' understudy. Fasten your seatbelt, Lou Costello. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Hi, Louis. How was your day? Great. My school's done the play Sleeping Beauty. And I got the lead. You're Sleeping Beauty? Mom, try the handsome prince. Oh, that's terrific. Your dad is gonna be so proud. Oh, I hate to call him at work. He's so busy, he never even has a chance to sit down. Anderson, phone call. Just my luck. Oh. What's that, Aura? Louie's going to be in a play. Uh, Louie's in your way. Well, tell him to move. It's on Thursday night. On Thursday night, fine. Cher, I love boxing. Yes, Sleeping Beauty. Oh, uh, Cher, you can have all the beauty sleep you need, baby. Uh -huh. Got it. Yes, I'll be there. I love you, too. Ah, uh, they accuse me of having shell shock. Anderson, I need those Johnson rods over to conveyor belt number seven. Pronto. Come on, come on, come on. Get going, boy. Let's go, let's go. And after that, get on. Of course, Your Highness. Oh, boy, I'm exhausted. I'm telling you, the problem around here is management. You should be running this, right? Uh, you got that right, Earl. Okay, Jeannie, you're lying there, asleep. You've been sleeping for 50 years. Now, Louie... I got it. I walk over, say my line, kiss her, and she wakes up. Good. Now, did I happen to mention that I am the director? Yes, and also the writer, the producer, and the gaffer. And the gaffer. Anderson, Andy Anderson, to my office, now. Uh, you wanted to see me, sir? Yes. I heard through the grapevine that you have some ideas on how this place could be run better. Well, yeah, I think I'm ready to take on more responsibility. What I was thinking was... Great. I'm going away on business. And I'm putting you in charge. Temporarily. I appreciate your confidence in me, sir. I won't let you down. Eternal slumber. Hold on. I saw you walk over here, but I didn't see the horse you rode in on. Oh, there is no horse. Well, I know that, but that's acting. You have to make the audience see the horse. Yeah, Mom, I'll work on it. Honey, I'm home. Can I get a cold one here? Oh, Andy, Louie and I were rehearsing, but it's too difficult for me to act and direct, so would you mind? Well, sure. I just put in a 12-hour day. I've never been more tired in my life. My back is killing me. I have carpal tunnel from signing my name in triplicate. So what do you say? Sure. What else is I going to do tonight? Eat? Eh, uh, not exactly the role I had in mind. Now, Sleeping Beauty is dead, so no talking. Louie, go ahead. My kiss shall awaken thee, fair maiden. Don't get any ideas, Romeo. I wouldn't worry about it, Dad. You're not exactly the prettiest Sleeping Beauty I've ever seen. I'll have you know, young man. In the war, there weren't any women around. So, who do you think played Joan of Arc in the USO show? Gee, let me guess. That's right. Never got any complaints, either. Got a couple of marriage proposals, but nothing really panned out. I couldn't admit it at the time, but it became apparent that the kiss was a huge hurdle. 12 years, the amnesia would break. I needed to do some research. Have you ever considered therapy? Good night, Jim. I had a great time. Love the submarine races. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. Me either. <laughs> the whole key to this is timing, lad. Enough. This is my front porch, not the tunnel of love. Inside, young lady. Dad, I was just saying goodnight. Don't treat me like a kid. Thanks for your help, Dad. Timing. I'll keep that in mind. Stop that. 
Knock it off! Do you think you can rehearse for the play if you're in detention? I know what must be done. Uh, hark! I see the beautiful princess. I will give her a, a noogie. What? Oh, that was a wonderful ad lib, Louie. However, inappropriate. We could give Mr. Glenn a chance. Genie's mine. I've got the makeout scene memorized. My kiss shall awaken the fair maiden. And then I kiss her and she wakes off. Play's over. <laughs> Six o'clock, Andy. Quitting time. Sure, give me a minute. Just gonna file these. Approve next week's schedule. Return three dozen phone calls. Sign about 64 checks. Then I'll be right with you. Laura, um, remember, uh, when you were with Chip on the porch the other night? Uh, anyway, well, I'm doing a report at school, and I had a couple of questions on, uh, the subject. Uh, is it better to have my mouth closed or open? Should my lips be pursed or relaxed? Or do I make a smacking sound at the end, or does that just happen naturally? Having trouble eating your mother's meatloaf again? <sighs> Dad! Do like I do, Lay. Swallow your bites whole, like a dog. That way, the taste won't linger. Oh, thanks. Dinner! It's meatloaf! <sighs> ah, man. Mom, Dad, I have something to tell you. What is it, dear? Well... You know the play? Oh, that's right. Andy, Louie's play is this Thursday. You're gonna be there, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Thursday. I uh, wouldn't miss it there. <laughs> anyway, I have a problem. I have to kiss Sleeping Beauty, and I want to make sure I do it right. Oh, yes. There's nothing like a kiss to top off a perfect evening. A glass of bubbly, some music, candlelight. Washboard stomach and being held just right. That's not kissing, that's romance. He's not interested in romance. Watch and learn. Ooh, Andy. Mm -hmm. ah, baby, say no big deal. <laughs> oh, my. Got it? Nothing to it. Mm -hmm. Kiss. Touch with lips as a mark of affection. Louie, there's nothing to kissing. It's easy. My first kiss was years ago. My kiss shall awaken thee, fair maiden. Yeah, I know. And then you kiss her and she wakes up, right? Hey, you worry about your lines and I'll worry about mine. Excuse me, Miss Kinney. Jeannie, when you were sleeping, I really felt the pain and anguish of your character. What's your secret? Pain and anguish? I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I mean, every time Louis's supposed to kiss me, he doesn't. Is it my breath? <sighs> no, certainly not. Why would chili dog with onion breath be offensive? Why, this very thing happened when I was on Broadway, rehearsing with Robert Preston. Of course, they replaced me with Shirley Jones, but that's a different story. The point is, on show night, he kissed her. Oh, boy, did he kiss her. He had been saving it for the stage. Now run along and don't worry. Thanks a lot, Miss Kinney. Saving it for the stage. A likely excuse. Threatened more like it. Hi, Louie. Oh, Jeannie, I've got something to tell you. I'm dropping out of the play. What? L Louie, you can't. Do you know what that means? Uh, that you'll be in eternal sleep? No. Hey, it's the big actor Jerry Lewis. Everyone knows you're afraid to kiss Jeannie. Afraid you might get cooties. Louie, are you afraid to kiss me? No. In fact, I'm afraid I'll upstage you. Oh, is that it? Look, Louie, you're gonna be great. I have faith in you. Thanks. So you'll stay in the play? For you? Yeah. Oh, Thursday! If I make it to show night. Oh, Andy. Gracious, look at the time. You're working too hard, dear. If Applegate can do it, so can I. What 
was I thinking asking for more responsibility? I got 11 kids and I died! Andy. Yeah. Andy, how are you doing? Not good. Uh, Just a little reminder. I know, I know. I read the note in my lunch. I found the one in my shoe. I got the one in my hard hat. Andy, you know how important this is to Louie. I'll do my best. I promise, honey. <gasps> oh, I don't doodles. Wait, don't panic. The nut nut bar. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> Is he going to be all right, Doctor? Yes, he, yeah, he'll be fine. Just just a broken tooth, but it's all it's all fixed now. <laughs> don't worry. The, the numbness will wear off in a couple of hours. Just wear this bib and don't bite your cheek. Oh, how cute. That's me, uh, Mr. Responsibility. Next time I have a good idea, I'm going to knock myself in the head. Uh... Louie, I know the show must go on. Sometimes the show goes on without you. Wipe your mouth, dear. Where are you going? Sir, with all due respect, I've got tickets to the theater. My kid's starring. Well, there's a mountain of paperwork here. Yeah, well, I didn't want to be greedy, so I saved you some. Anderson! You can't leave! Hey, there's always tomorrow. But tomorrow, I can't see my son's play. Yeah, I should make a pit stop. Ah, the play must go on. I better go watch him. Thank you, Lord. Just wanted to wish you luck, Louie. Knock him dead. What? Hey, Miss Kitty, listen to this. Louie, is everything all right? I'm fine. Okay, good. Relax and have fun, and don't ruin my poetry. I know you're hiding something. I'm gonna keep my eye on you, mush mouth. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess who I ah, loved. Andy, you It isn't here. easy being beautiful. Oh, I'm so glad you made it. Make One worse. message for the world. Huh? Didn't even have time to use the restroom. I have to go so bad my back teeth are falling. Be beautiful, princess. We'll eat this apple and then sleep forever. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll be right back. Andy, wait. It's almost intermission now. Be polite. Just how polite would it be if we had a little flood in here? <laughs> What'd he say? Boy, I'm so backed up, my ears are clogging. What did he just say? Something is wrong. Understudy! Get ready! <laughs> I'm ready, Miss Kitty. Get me in there. Yes. Louis. Louis. What is the matter with Louis, you? Get off the stage. Unsafe Louis. Get her. Louis, Don't get pass. Off the stage. Well, it better pass quickly, Louis. I don't like the alternative. You're out of there, pal. And that's the end of Act One. We'll break for a brief intermission. About time. That act was nice and concise. Louis, get off the stage. Louis. Louie, Louie, quick, but push me out there. Yeah. Andy, it's starting again. You can't be serious. How could he do this to me? I need mossy woods. I press on, searching for my grill. I see my princess. I must traverse Whoa. this waterfall. <gasps> This is an American. He's back. Everything's okay. My lips working like a heart defibrillator. Oh, that's my favorite line. My kiss shall awaken thee, fair maiden. Come on, Louie, you can do it. He's gonna choke. Will you kiss her already?
Good job. Bravo! 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 Shut away, Louie! Don't get so cocky, Lufa Sponge. You only got to kiss her because it was in the script. What? wasn't the quiet Glenn oh. All right! So, Andy, how did you get away from work? Well, I finished, so I left. You left work because you knew how important it was for you to see your son's play. It's because of the free popcorn. Hey, that's mine! In fact, I'm gonna get some right now. <laughs> Gangway, I'm gonna blow! Ah, just my luck. Oh. I'm so proud of you, Louie. I knew you were gonna be great. Thanks. I couldn't have done it without you. Oh, you were both wonderful. Bravissimo. I'm rewriting Streetcar. And I do believe I've found my Stanley and Blanche. Hey, where's Dad? Oh, a uh, little emergency. He'll be here to congratulate you later. Freedom! Everything turned out great. I just hope that the next time I kiss Jeannie, I wouldn't be wearing pointy shoes and tights. But who else can say that their first kiss received a standing ovation? Kiss. Touch with lips as a mark of affection. <laughs> no smooching in front of the kid. You know what that can lead to? All right! Let me tell you about my family. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Roller coaster ride, but no surprise. It's happening, Louie, Louie, Louie. It's happening, Louie, Louie, Louie. It's life with life with the lovable, completely huggable. It's life with Louie. In Cedar Knoll, Wisconsin, winter seemed to last nine months of the year. But each December, just when it seemed a kid couldn't take the cold anymore, an oasis appeared in the sub-freezing desert. Right. Christmas. Do you see anything you might like for Christmas, Louie? Yeah, lots of stuff. Remember, there's a $5 limit for each of you. Five dollars? You try buying gifts for 11 kids. There's a $5 limit for each of you, and that's final. Oh, I'm sure you'll both find something nice. Yeah, Tommy. You ask for the letters A through L, I'll mm -hmm. ask for the letters M through Z, and then next year we'll get the board and we can spell out thank you, Dad. Mm. Now, $5 back then was worth a lot more than it is now. But it still wasn't enough to buy the real cool stuff. Hey, no fair. I'll have the meat. Well, I'm asking my folks for figure skates. Wow, you think you'll get them? I've worked all year for those skates, and I've even been doing extra chores around the house lately. I asked my parents for ice skates, but I'm getting a D in spelling. Think I have a chance? Try my technique. When you're with your folks and you see a present you really want, get real quiet looking at it. Let a single tear fall down your cheek, then just turn around and walk away. What are you asking for, Louie? I don't know. Five bucks won't buy a pair of ice skates. I'd be lucky to even get the laces. Hey, Tico, have you decided what to ask your parents for for Christmas? Not yet. Your family doing anything special this year? Not really. Anything's got to be better than Christmas dinner at my house. It's a zoo. All your relatives coming over to your place, too? I don't think so. Anyone want to play horse? I will. How do you spell horse again? Boys and girls, we have a very special guest here today. Say hello to Santa Claus. How, how, how? <laughs> Christmas. What do you think, Santa? Perhaps it's time for a Christmas carol? How about a lullaby? Maybe you could put these little wildebeests to sleep. Let's all pay attention to Santa as he sings Deck the Halls. Deck the what? She said it was time for Santa to sing Deck the Halls. I think you got the wrong jolly fat man, lady. <laughs> I'm no burr eyes. <laughs>
presents, Santa. We want our presents. Number two, number two. I'm surrounded. Request immediate airlift. Boys and girls, that's enough. Uh, when's nap time around here? You gonna need milk and cookies you can throw as bait? How was it, dear? How was it, huh? You really couldn't relate to the experience unless you've been attacked by a pack of wild wolves. Look what the demented demons did to my suit, honey. Oh, that's not so bad. I'll have this suit fixed in a jiffy. Don't bother. My Saturdays are over. I'll never wear red again. Oh, Andy, you don't mean that. Forget it, Aura. This Santa's retired. Gee. I wonder how Christmas will survive. But, Andy, I volunteered you to play Santa at the Cedar Knoll Orphanage this year. You what? Why don't you just put me back in active duty? Here. The Women's Auxiliary needs a Santa to give out the gifts. You're barking up the wrong Santa here, Aura. But, Andy, it's Christmas, and they're orphans. Poor little orphans. Bah humbug. Jeez, Dad, have a heart. I gave it to the Tin Man. Oh. What's the right thing? Come on, you know what I want some more. Hey. 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 You ready, Louie? Not particularly. Just be ready. <laughs> Hi, Louie! What kind of tizzy thing is that? Hey! Yes! All right! Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Here you go, Louie! <laughs> nice throw, Louie. Well, you know, it's all in the wrist. <laughs> First of all, Santa's supposed to be fat. A guy is in good a shape as me. Ha! Who's ever gonna believe I'm fat enough to be Santa? Hey, not so tight, I'm not bleeding. So, Andy, I talked with your brother Eric this morning. I invited him and his family here for Christmas dinner. Your mother, too. Ow! Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Andy. Did I stick you? No. The thought of Eric and my mother visiting is more painful than a sharp pin in my side. More like a dagger in my heart. So, Louie... Have you decided what to ask Santa for Christmas? With a $5 limit, the possibilities are simply endless. I'm thinking nail clippers are a refrigerator magnet at this point. Stop complaining. When I was your age, I was lucky to get a lump of coal for Christmas. In fact, I'd have to use it to keep me warm for most of the winter. Yeah, well, that explains a lot. Thanks for the suggestion, Dad. Well, you'll think of something, and then we'll write a letter to Santa together. Besides, there's a lot more to Christmas than getting gifts. Yeah, right. Isn't that right, Andy? Sure. Don't forget the part, though, where the annoying relatives invade your house and ruin the entire holiday. <laughs> hey, check out the orphanage. Look at the size of that thing. Wouldn't it be cool living in that place? Yeah, and no parents to tell you what to do. I've got an idea. Why don't we go down the other side of the hill? <gasps> What'd I say? That's Concussion Corridor. No kid has ever slept down it and lived except Glen Glen. And look what happened to him. Oh, it doesn't look that tough to me. I'll bet you with Louie steering, we could make it all the way down. What do you say? Uh, did I mention they call it Concussion Corridor? Come on, it'll be fine. Did I mention they call this Concussion Corridor? <laughs> Did I mention that that was the greatest? Did you see how high we went flying? That was really fun. Who wants to come in for hot chocolate? Me! 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 Hi, Mom. Hi, kids. Come on in. Who wants hot chocolate? She's a mind reader. Here we go. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chico. Thank you very much, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, you're welcome. You kids have fun now. 
I can't believe all the Knights never comic books you've got, Louie. Hey, Louie, where's your electric football game? Somewhere in the closet. You've got electric football? Wow. Is all that stuff yours? It's mostly junk. It's no big deal. Hey, I've seen you play basketball. You're the best. Oh, thanks, kids. Can I get your autograph on my ball? Peanut! Sorry, Kate. Little brother's gonna be so annoying. He seems okay to me. Must be fun to have such a big family. Try Three Ring Circus. You just witnessed the trained seal act. I'd give anything <laughs> if I could be an only child. Take it from me. Being an only child isn't as fun as you might think. Would anyone like any homemade sugar cookies? Homemade? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Your family's so cool. You haven't met Corporal Keister yet. Thanks, Mrs. Thanks, Mrs. Anderson. Thanks, Mrs. Anderson. Thanks again. I had a really great time. Later, Teak. Well, he is just the nicest boy. Tico's the luckiest guy ever. He's handsome, he's popular, he's the best athlete at school. He's an only child. He's got everything. I'd say he's pretty smart, too. Why is that? Because he's decided to be friends with you. Come on, Louie. Five bucks has to be able to buy something cool in this town. Let's face it. For five bucks, I can't even get the batteries for that truck. Maybe you should ask for a book. Did he just use a four-letter word? Sorry, what was I thinking? How about a gumball machine? It costs five bucks. Yeah, without the gumballs. What am I gonna do? If I don't come up with something, my dad said Santa's gonna bring me antifreeze for the Rambler. <laughs> Your dad sounds really funny. It's no joke. I got a flywheel for my seventh birthday. Hey, what are you doing? That's too tight. Hey, Dad. Sorry, dear. I thought you were too skinny to play Santa. <laughs> yeah. I heard that. Here, you're all ready, Andy. Now remember, the gifts donated from the toy store all have labels on them. Make sure you give the right gifts to the right kids. Uh, Aura, I can read. Now where are the gifts? That should be them right now. Delivery for Anderson. Aura, are you kidding me? How in the heck am I supposed to carry all those presents? <laughs> uh oh. Well, Aura, take a look at Santa's little helpers. That one for all, all for one, huh, guys? Trick or treat. Oh, boys, you're both adorable. You think maybe I could be adorable in my regular clothes? Well, time's a waste, and let's get a move on before I pass out from how tight this belt is. Not if you got 11 kids. Holy night. What, they see my boxers? Until my mother visits. All is bright, brown, young, whatever it is. I never did learn that part. Right here. What Santa's gonna bring me? Can I have one, please? Right over here. Oh! Hey, Dad, where are you going? I'm going to the North Pole. Where do you think I'm going? You can't just walk through the front door. Santa has to come down the chimney. Duh. Go down the chimney? What are you nuts? Santa's gotta come down the chimney. Santa's gotta come down the chimney. Oh, kids. I got a bad feeling about this. Come on, Dad. Tommy and I'll be right behind you. Now oh, that's a real comfort, kid. All right. Give me a push now, Louie. Quiet, please. Quiet now. I think I hear Santa's reindeer. Come on, let's hurry up. I'm freezing my caboose off out here. Hey, old boy, come on down. Where are you? Oh, dear. Right here, Dad. According to the Santa's Little Helper's Handbook, we get to go through the front door. Uh... Who's ready for their gifts? Frankie. Thanks, Santa. Twelve ninety nine plus tax, in case you want to know. Denise? Oh, oh, that's me. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, don't mention it. Oh, that's sweet. 1850. Hey, Elf Boy, why don't you do Santa a favor and brush the snow off the ramble? Uh, I mean the sleigh. <laughs> and the last present goes to. Uh, Russell. Russell! Russ? 
Rusty. Uh, going once, Russell. <gasps> Hi, Louie. Twice. Uh, here you go, Russell. You might want to have your hearing checked yet. Thanks. Russell? Um, why do they call you Tico? I'm the oldest one here, so they call me Antique, or Teak for short. Hi, Tico. Hi, Mrs. Anderson. Don't you want to open up your present? Okay. Electric train? That's $29.99. You want to help me set it up? Sure. Why not? I'll never get one. So how come you didn't tell me you lived in an orphanage? I don't know. Embarrassed, I guess. Embarrassed of what? Look what I have to deal with. Dean Martin over there. I just don't like bringing it up. Especially this time of year. You're really lucky to have your parents and all those brothers and sisters. Yeah, I guess so. I wish I was fighting on the front lines. What do you say? Well, are I'm pretty convincing, huh? I believe the kids think I'm the real Santa Claus. Hey, Mr. Anderson, do you think you can sing us another Christmas carol? Huh? Ah, oh, sure, sure. I'll be right there. Uh, spoiler. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I decided what I want for my present. Oh, good. What is it? I want Tico to be able to spend Christmas Day with our family. Just what we need, another mouth to feed. Jeez, Daddy's not that big. It shouldn't cost more than five bucks to feed him. Ah, oh, sure. Why don't you just invite the whole neighborhood? They can take shifts ready in our refrigerator. You sure you wouldn't rather have a real present, Louie? Come on, Mom. Christmas isn't just about getting gifts. That's right, Louie, it's not. I think if it's all right with the orphanage, it's all right with us. Right, in. Since when did our house become the local smorgasbord? Old Food Shelf Anderson, at your service. Open the door, empty the shelves. Hey, why didn't I think of that? Why don't we set up tables in the yard in a tent? Hey, no fair. Back here, no worries. you're fine, Chico. <laughs> hey, you're it. Did somebody just shoot me? Boys, come on in for dinner now. There are my little grandsons. Did you have fun outside? Yeah. I can't remember when I had more fun. <gasps> ah, what are you doing, my vice grab? Give that to me and brew. Whose son are you, anyways? Stiffed again. Here we go. Oh, this looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> hey, are you my cousin or something? I'm a friend of Louis. What? <laughs> Did you lose a bet? He's the one who's never had a date. I heard that. Andy, why don't you say grace? Okay, let's see. Uh, if you're listening, big guy, uh, thanks for the vittles and thanks for bringing our family together. All right, big guy. That was very nice, Andy. Uh, I didn't mean you. Eat up, everyone. There's plenty more where that will be. Hey, Danny, we're getting this meat. Okay. Oh. 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 Here we go. Oh. Oh. Hey, pass some of that slop over here. <laughs> I'm sorry she doesn't speak English. She's Dutch. She just came over. We've adopted her. I told her you wouldn't be able to speak to her. Hey, Andy. Has that car of yours kicked yet? <laughs> Still going strong. 750,000 miles on it. Only four engine changes, three ring jobs. Still driving on the original tires. Same battery all this time, because I keep the water filled. You need to upgrade to a luxury car? Like Mom and me. I'll stick with the real man's form of transportation. The ram. Hey, check out my new camera. It's state of the art. Let me tell you, it cost me a pretty penny. Hey, Dad, Tommy and I got you a present. Ah, uh, how nice. You see that, Eric? The kids really love their old man. A lump of coal? What kind of gift is that for dear old Dad? Well, I wanted to bring your childhood back to you. Well, this baby should keep the family warm through February, at least. Or start a big fire underneath Eric's car. Oh, 
Just kidding you there, brother. Hey, everybody! Let's take a family picture with my new camera. What a great idea. Oh. Come on now, gather around, everybody. You two, up the stairs. Yes. Everyone Go else, around. around. Go around. Go around. How about if I take the picture? Great idea! Say cheese! Hey, wait a minute. What about Tico? Shouldn't he be in the picture? Of course he should. Tico, why don't you join us? Don't worry about it. Wait, I've got an idea. We'll use the timer. Ha, everyone get in position. Okay, everybody say, Wisconsin Swiss. Wisconsin Swiss. Uh. Tico and I had the best Christmas ever that year. I got a surprise for you, son. Sometimes the best gift you can get is to spend time with somebody you really like. We played games, ate cookies, and later that night, Dad led the whole family in a Christmas carol. On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love sent to me 12 migraine headaches, 11 children screaming, 10 hour work days, 9 neighbors suing, 8 dogs a barking, 7 chores a waiting, 6 repairmen pounding, 5 years till I kick, 4 utility bills, 3 mortgages, 2 weeks off a year, and a wife to stand by me throughout it all. Oh, I should have been a singer. People are so fun. Piled in a sleigh. I wish I was fighting on the front lines. What do you say? You sent a break. Ah.